Lies, filthy lies! Zarek slammed his fist down, cracking his desk. Humans weak, not likely. The young Krogar seethed with anger, scales bristling, as his alien professor droned on about mankind's inevitable demise. Professor Zelthor gestured to gruesome diagrams on the hollow screens. Mutilated human corpses strewn about like garbage. As you can see, class, in their early encounters with advanced races, humans stood no chance. Their primitive technology and fragile bodies made subjugation or extinction only a matter of time. Zarek glared at the professor through narrowed reptilian eyes. This couldn't be the full story. If humans were so weak, how did any survive? Their sheer numbers and breeding rates? No, there had to be more. Inconsistencies nagged at Zarek. He would find the truth. The galaxy had to know what humans were truly capable of and before it was too late. Zarek stormed out of the lecture hall, his claws clicking against the polished floor. He marched through the bustling corridors of the Galactic Academy, dodging past students of various species. His mind raced with questions and doubts about the so-called truth presented by Professor Zelthor. He headed straight for the Academy's sprawling digital archives. The circular room hummed, with the soft glow of hollow screens and the whir of data servers. Zarek plopped down at an empty terminal and began his search, his talons tapping furiously at the interface. Access records on early human history, Zarek commanded. The screen flashed with a list of files, but as Zarek scrolled through them he noticed something strange. Many of the entries were marked as redacted or classified. The few documents that remained accessible seemed stripped of any real substance, containing only the barest, most sanitized accounts of humanity's past. Zarek growled in frustration. He had hit a wall, but he refused to give up so easily. He needed someone with the skills to dig deeper, to unearth the secrets that the Academy seemed determined to keep buried. Zarek pulled out his communicator and typed out a message to his friend Korvash. Need your help. Meet me at the archives. Bring your hacking gear. A few minutes later, Korvash strode into the room, his tech-laden backpack slung over his shoulder. The Krogar was known throughout the Academy for his uncanny ability to slice through even the toughest security protocols. What's this about, Zarek? Korvash asked, plopping down beside him. The Academy's hiding something about the humans. I need to know the truth. Korvash grinned, his eyes sparkling with mischief. A challenge, eh? Count me in. The two friends huddled around the terminal, Korvash's fingers flying across the holographic keys. He muttered to himself as he worked, his brow furrowed in concentration. Suddenly the screen flashed green, and a torrent of previously hidden files flooded the display. Zarek and Korvash exchanged triumphant glances before diving into the trove of data. As they pored over the documents, their eyes widened with each revelation. The files painted a picture of humanity that was far different from the weak, helpless species portrayed by their professor. Records showed that even when faced with vastly superior alien technology, humans demonstrated a remarkable ability to adapt and overcome. They reverse-engineered advanced weaponry and starships, quickly closing the gap between themselves and their adversaries. Tactical reports described how human commanders employed innovative, unconventional strategies to outmaneuver and outfight their opponents. Even when outnumbered and outgunned, they managed to turn the tide of battle through sheer ingenuity and determination. But what struck Zarek and Korvash the most was the humans' unwavering commitment to the survival of their species. They fought with a ferocity and tenacity that seemed to defy their biological limitations. No matter the odds, no matter the cost, they refused to surrender or submit. As the two Krogar continued to read, a newfound respect for humanity began to take root in their hearts. The Academy had been lying to them, to everyone, about the true nature of these resilient, adaptable creatures. Zarek clenched his fists, his resolve hardening with each passing moment. He would not let this deception stand. The galaxy needed to know the truth about humans, and he would stop at nothing to uncover it. Zarek marched into the lecture hall, his eyes blazing with determination. 
He clutched a data pad filled with the evidence he and Korvash had uncovered, ready to confront Professor Zelthor and expose the lies that had been fed to them. As he took his seat, he couldn't help but notice the curious glances from his classmates, who sensed the tension radiating from him. Professor Zelthor strode into the room, his robe swishing behind him. He began his lecture once again spouting the same tired narrative about humanity's weakness and inevitable downfall. Zarek's scales bristled with each word, his anger rising like a volcanic eruption. Unable to contain himself any longer, Zarek shot up from his seat. Professor, I have evidence that contradicts everything you've been teaching us about humans. The room fell silent, all eyes turning to Zarek. Professor Zelthor's face contorted with irritation. Sit down, Zarek. I will not have my lecture interrupted by baseless claims. But Zarek stood his ground. These aren't baseless claims, Professor. I've uncovered records that show humans are far more resilient and adaptable than you've led us to believe. They've reverse-engineered advanced technology, employed innovative tactics, and fought with unmatched determination to protect their species. Zarek held up his data pad, the evidence displayed on the screen for all to see. His classmates leaned forward, their interest piqued by the shocking revelations. Professor Zelthor's eyes narrowed. Where did you get this information, Zarek? These files are classified. That's exactly the point, Professor. Why would the Academy classify this information if it didn't have something to hide? Why not present a complete and accurate picture of human history? The Professor's face flushed with anger. Enough! I will not have my authority questioned by a mere student. This discussion is over. But Zarek's classmates began to murmur amongst themselves, the seeds of doubt taking root in their minds. A fierce debate erupted, with students challenging the professor's teachings and demanding answers. As the chaos grew, Professor Zelthor slammed his fist on the podium. Class dismissed! Everyone out now! Zarek and his classmates filed out of the lecture hall, buzzing with excitement and confusion. In the corridors the debate continued, with students huddled in groups discussing the implications of Zarek's revelations. Over the next few days word of the controversy spread like wildfire throughout the academy. Students from other classes sought out Zarek and Korvash, eager to learn more about the truth behind humanity's history. The two friends found themselves at the center of a growing movement, their names whispered in the halls, as the ones who dared to challenge the status quo. Emboldened by the support of their peers, Zarek and Korvash pressed on with their investigation. They spent long hours in the archives, scouring through the hidden files and piecing together a more comprehensive picture of humanity's past. But their actions did not go unnoticed. Professor Zelthor, fuming with rage, reported Zarek and Korvash to the Academy's administration accusing them of insubordination and spreading dangerous misinformation. The two friends soon found themselves called before a panel of high-ranking officials, their futures at the academy hanging in the balance. The administrators, their faces stern and unyielding, demanded an explanation for their actions. Zarek stood tall, his voice unwavering as he presented the evidence he and Korvash had gathered. He spoke passionately about the need for truth and transparency, arguing that the Academy had a responsibility to provide its students with accurate information. But the officials remained unmoved, their eyes cold and calculating. They dismissed Zarek's evidence as mere speculation and warned him of the consequences of spreading such dangerous ideas. As the meeting drew to a close, Zarek and Korvash were left with a stark choice. Abandon their pursuit of the truth and fall in line, or risk everything to expose the lies and deception that had permeated the Academy for so long. Zarek's communicator buzzed with an incoming message from an unknown sender. The text simply read, I have information about the humans that you need to see. Meet me at the abandoned warehouse on the outskirts of the city tonight. Come alone. Zarek's heart raced. Could this be the break he was looking for? He forwarded the message to Korvash. Looks like we've got a lead. You in? Uh, you know it, Korvash replied. See you there. That night, Zarek crept into the darkened warehouse, his senses on high alert. A hooded figure emerged from the shadows. Zarek, I presume. 
Zarek nodded cautiously. Who are you? What's this about? The figure lowered his hood, revealing the weathered face of a Thurinian male. I am Dr. Zalar, a historian. I've been following your work, and I believe we have a common goal. Zarek's eyes narrowed. And what goal is that? Exposing the truth about humanity, Dr. Zalar said. For decades I've been researching their history, and what I've uncovered is nothing short of a galactic conspiracy. Zarek leaned forward, his interest piqued. Go on. Dr. Zalar pulled out a data pad and began scrolling through files. The advanced races, the ones who claim to be humanity's superiors, they're threatened by the human's potential, threatened by their refusal to submit. He handed the data pad to Zarek. They've been working to undermine human achievements, to discredit them at every turn. They've propagated this false narrative of human weakness and inferiority, all to keep them under control. Zarek's eyes widened as he scanned the documents. Classified reports, eyewitness accounts, historical artifacts, all of it corroborating Dr. Zalar's claims. This is incredible, he breathed. Dr. Zalar nodded solemnly. The galaxy needs to know the truth, and I believe you and your friend are the ones to bring it to light. Zarek's mind raced with the implications. If they could expose this conspiracy, it would change everything. But he knew the risks. We'll be going up against some of the most powerful forces in the galaxy, he said. There will be consequences. Dr. Zalar placed a hand on Zarek's shoulder. The truth is worth fighting for, no matter the cost. I have faith in you, Zarek. With that, he melted back into the shadows, leaving Zarek alone with the weight of this newfound knowledge. Korvash stepped out from his hiding spot, his eyes wide. Did you hear all that? Zarek nodded, his jaw set with determination. We have work to do. Back in Korvash's dorm room, they pored over the files Dr. Zalar had provided. Each new piece of evidence was a revelation, painting a picture of a galactic conspiracy that ran deeper than they ever could have imagined. Look at this, Korvash said, pointing to a document on the screen. An entire human colony wiped out, and the official report blames it on natural disasters, but these eyewitness accounts tell a different story. Zarek nodded grimly, genocide covered up by the powers that be, and here a human invention that could have revolutionized space travel, but it was suppressed and the inventor discredited. They worked through the night, cataloging the evidence and planning their next move. They knew they couldn't trust the usual channels. The academy, the media, even the government were all likely complicit in the cover-up. We need to go public, Zarek said. Broadcast the truth to the entire galaxy so they can't silence us. Korvash grinned. I might know a way, but it's risky. Riskier than taking on the most powerful forces in the galaxy. They both laughed, but there was an edge to it. They knew the stakes, they knew the danger. But they also knew that they couldn't turn back now. Hazarik stood, his eyes blazing with purpose. Let's do this for the humans, for the truth. Korvash nodded, his own determination mirroring his friends, for the truth. The Grand Auditorium of the Galactic Academy was packed to the brim, a sea of diverse alien faces filling every seat. The air buzzed with anticipation as the stage lights flared to life, illuminating Zarek as he strode to the podium, his head held high. Korvash and Dr. Zalar flanked him, their presence a silent show of support. So Zarek gripped the edges of the podium, his claws leaving slight indentations in the polished wood. He took a deep breath, his gaze sweeping across the audience. People of the galaxy, he began, his voice booming through the auditorium. We gather here today to uncover a truth that has been hidden from us for far too long, a truth about the human species and their place in our galactic community. Murmurs rippled through the crowd as Zarek activated the hollow display, the damning evidence he and his team had gathered materializing in the air. For centuries, we have been told that humans are weak, inferior, and destined for subjugation. But the reality is far different. Through their resilience, ingenuity, and unyielding spirit, humans have achieved feats that many of us once thought impossible. 
the hollow display shifted, showcasing images of human soldiers standing tall against overwhelming odds, their primitive weapons held with grim determination. In the face of advanced alien technology, humans have adapted and overcome. They have reverse-engineered our weapons, our ships and our tactics, leveling the playing field through sheer tenacity and brilliance. Zarek's voice grew louder, his passion evident in every word. And yet this information has been systematically suppressed, buried beneath layers of lies and propaganda. The powers that be, threatened by humanity's potential, have sought to keep them under control, to maintain the illusion of their inferiority. The audience was in an uproar now, shouts of disbelief and anger filling the air. Zarek raised his hand, silencing the crowd, but we will not be silenced. We will not allow this injustice to continue. Today we reveal the truth and we demand change. We demand that humanity be recognized for their achievements, their strength, and their rightful place among the stars. As Zarek prepared to reveal the final, most damning piece of evidence, the doors to the auditorium burst open with a resounding boom. Heavily armed Thurinian soldiers poured into the room, their weapons trained on the stage. At their head was Professor Zelthor, his face contorted with rage. Zarek Korvash, you are hereby under arrest for treason against the Galactic Order, Zelthor bellowed, his voice cutting through the chaos. Your lies and your rebellious actions will not be tolerated. Zarek stood firm, his eyes blazing with defiance. The only lies here are the ones you and your kind have been feeding us for generations. We will not be silenced. The truth will be heard. But the soldiers were already moving, pushing through the crowd with ruthless efficiency. Korvash grabbed Zarek's arm, his eyes darting towards the exit. We need to go now, he hissed. In the midst of the pandemonium, Dr. Zalar slipped away, clutching a data drive containing a copy of the evidence. He melted into the crowd, his mind racing with plans to continue the fight, even as his allies were dragged away in chains. Zarek and Korvash struggled against their captors, but the soldier's grip was unyielding. As they were hauled from the stage, Zarek locked eyes with Zelthor, his voice ringing out over the din. You can't stop the truth, Professor. No matter what you do to us, others will rise to take our place. The galaxy will know of humanity's strength, and your lies will crumble to dust. Zelthor sneered, his hand tightening around his weapon. We shall see about that, traitor, we shall see. And with those ominous words hanging in the air, Zarek and Korvash were dragged away, their fate uncertain in the face of the galactic power's desperate bid to maintain their grip on the narrative. But even as the doors slammed shut behind them, the seeds of revolution had been sown, and the fight for truth had only just begun. The Grand Auditorium stood empty, a haunting silence filling the once bustling space. The stage where Zarek had stood just hours before was now a stark reminder of the abrupt end to his revelations. Across the Galactic Academy, students huddled in groups, their hushed whispers echoing through the halls. Some clung to the official narrative, their faith in the establishment unshaken. They argued that Zarek and Korvash were misguided, that their actions were a threat to the Galactic Order. But others, their eyes now open to the possibility of deception, questioned the motives behind the violent suppression of the truth. In the dormitories, a young Zerillian student named Tarquin sat hunched over his data pad, replaying the footage of Zarek's speech. His roommate, a Keltarian named Vaxar, paced the room, his brow furrowed in thought. They wouldn't have arrested them like that if they weren't onto something, Vaxar muttered, his claws clicking against the metal floor. You saw the look on Zelthor's face. That wasn't just anger. That was fear. Tarquin nodded his eyes still glued to the screen. But what can we do if they can take down Zarik and Korvash? What chance do we have? Vaxar stopped pacing and looked at his friend, his eyes gleaming with determination. We can't let this go. We have to find out the truth, for their sake and for ours. Across the galaxy, Dr. Zalar sat in a dimly lit room, his eyes scanning the data drive in his hand. He knew he was a fugitive now, his name and image plastered across every news channel. The Thurinian authorities had wasted no time in painting him as a traitor, 
a madman obsessed with conspiracy theories. But he knew the truth, and he would not let it die with him. With trembling fingers, he composed a message to an old colleague, a Zygorian professor named Kili Ahn. He attached a small portion of the evidence, just enough to pique Kili Ahn's interest. As he hit send, he whispered a silent prayer to the gods of his ancestors, hoping that his message would find its way to the right hands. In a secret detention facility deep within Thurinian space, Zarik and Korvash sat in separate cells, their bodies bruised and their minds weary. The interrogations had been relentless, their captors employing every tactic in their arsenal to break them. But still they held on to the truth, their resolve unshakable. Professor Zelthor strode into Zarik's cell, his face a mask of cold fury. You could end this, you know, he hissed, his hot breath washing over Zarik's scales. Just admit that you were wrong, that you were misled. Denounce your claims, and this can all be over. Zarik lifted his head, his eyes locking with Zelthor's. I will never denounce the truth, he said, his voice hoarse but steady. You can torture me, you can kill me, but you cannot change what I know in my heart to be true. Zelthor's hand lashed out, striking Zarik across the face. You fool, he roared, his composure slipping. Do you think this ends with you? We will hunt down every last one of your collaborators. We will erase every trace of your so-called evidence. The truth will die with you, and the galaxy will never know any different. But even as the words left Zelthor's mouth, Zarik felt a flicker of hope in his chest. Dr. Zalar was still out there, and with him, the evidence. The truth had a way of finding the light, no matter how deep the darkness. And as long as he and Korvash held on to their convictions, as long as they drew strength from each other, the fight was not over. In the cell next to Zarix, Korvash sat with his back against the wall, his eyes closed in meditation. He reached out with his mind, seeking the familiar presence of his friend. And there, in the darkness, he felt it, a flicker of hope, a silent promise. They would endure, they would survive, and one day the truth would be known. In the depths of the Galactic Academy's dormitories, a clandestine meeting was taking place. Huddled around a dimly lit table were a dozen students from various species, their faces illuminated by the soft glow of a holographic display. At the head of the table stood Lyra, her vibrant purple skylies shimmering under the light as she addressed the group. We all know why we're here, she said, her voice low but filled with determination. Zarik and Korvash risked everything to expose the truth, and now they're paying the price. We can't let their sacrifice be in vain. Murmurs of agreement rippled through the room, and a Zigorian student named Kilan spoke up. But what can we do? We're just students, and they've got the full might of the Thurinian government behind them. Lyra's eyes narrowed. We may be students, but we're not powerless. We have knowledge, skills, and most importantly, we have each other. If we work together, we can build a movement that even the galactic powers can't ignore. She tapped a button on the table, and the holographic display shifted to show a complex web of connections. I've been reaching out to anyone who might be sympathetic to our cause. Students, professors, even some low-level government officials who are tired of the lies. We're not alone in this fight. As Lyra outlined her plan, the atmosphere in the room shifted from trepidation to excitement. They would start by gathering information hacking into secure databases and intercepting communications to learn more about Zarik and Korvash's whereabouts. They would also launch a covert recruitment campaign, seeking out others who shared their desire for truth and justice. But that's just the beginning, Lyra said, her voice rising with passion. Our ultimate goal is to free Zarik and Korvash, and to do that, we'll need to plan a rescue mission. It won't be easy, but with the right intel and the right team, we can make it happen. As the meeting drew to a close, each member of the group left with a renewed sense of purpose. They knew the risks they were taking, but they also knew that the stakes were too high to ignore. The truth was out there, and they were determined to uncover it, no matter the cost. In the weeks that followed, the resistance movement grew in both size and scope. Lyra worked tirelessly to coordinate their efforts, spending long hours poring over data and strategizing with her fellow rebels. 
they celebrated small victories like the successful hack of a Thurinian communications relay and mourned setbacks like the sudden disappearance of a key ally. But through it all, they never lost sight of their ultimate goal. Zarik and Korvash were counting on them, and they would not let them down. One night, as Lyra sat hunched over her computer, a sudden ping alerted her to an incoming message. Her heart raced as she recognized the encryption. It was from Dr. Zal R., the mysterious figure who had set this all in motion. With trembling fingers, she decrypted the message, her eyes widening as she read its contents. Dr. Zalar had managed to uncover the location of the detention facility where Zarik and Korvash were being held, along with detailed schematics of its layout and security systems. Lyra leaned back in her chair, a slow smile spreading across her face. This was it, the breakthrough they had been waiting for. With this information, they could finally put their rescue plan into action. She quickly forwarded the message to her most trusted lieutenants, along with a simple instruction. Prepare for phase two. We're going in. As the resistance members scrambled to mobilize their resources and finalize their strategies, Lyra allowed herself a moment of quiet reflection. She thought of Zarik and Korvash, battered but unbroken, holding on to their convictions even in the face of unimaginable adversity. Hold on just a little longer, she whispered, as if they could hear her across the vast expanse of space. We're coming for you, and when we find you, we're going to make sure the whole galaxy knows the truth. With a final nod of determination, Lyra stood and strode out of the room, ready to lead her rebel alliance into the fight of their lives. The galactic powers may have had strength in numbers, but the resistance had something far more powerful, the unshakable conviction that the truth, no matter how deeply buried, could never be silenced forever. In the shadows of the Galactic Academy's halls, Professor Zelthor paced back and forth in his office, his eyes fixed on the holographic display before him. The screen flickered with images of Lyra and her fellow resistance members, their faces etched with determination as they huddled together in secret meetings. Zelthor's lips curled into a sneer as he watched them, his fingers tapping against the smooth surface of his desk. They think they can outsmart us, he muttered, his voice dripping with disdain, but they have no idea what they're up against. He tapped a button on his wrist, and the image of a Thurinian general appeared on the screen. The general's face was lined with age and experience, his eyes cold and calculating. General Zaxir, Zelthor said, inclining his head in a brief show of respect, I trust you've been monitoring the situation at the Academy. Of course, Zaxir replied, his voice gravelly and harsh. Your reports have been most concerning. This resistance movement cannot be allowed to gain any further traction. Zelthor nodded, his gaze drifting back to the images of Lyra and her allies. I agree. We must act swiftly and decisively to crush this rebellion before it spreads beyond the Academy walls. What do you propose? Zaxir asked, leaning forward in his seat. Zelthor's eyes gleamed with malice as he outlined his plan. First, we tighten security at the Academy, increase patrols, install new surveillance systems, and monitor all communications in and out of the campus. We must make it impossible for the Resistance to operate without our knowledge. Zaxir grunted in approval. And what of the students themselves? How do we deal with the ringleaders? Leave that to me. Zelthor said, his voice low and menacing. I have a few tricks up my sleeve to discredit them and turn public opinion against their cause. A carefully orchestrated campaign of disinformation and propaganda should do the trick. The general nodded, a cruel smile playing at the corners of his mouth. Very well. I will ensure that you have all the resources you need to carry out your plan. But what of the two troublemakers you have in custody, Zarik and Korvash? Zelthor's eyes narrowed. They have proven to be more resilient than I anticipated, but no matter, I will break them one way or another. He leaned back in his chair, his fingers steepled before him. Increase the pressure on them. More frequent interrogations, harsher techniques. We will push them to their limits and beyond, until they have no choice but to submit to our will. Zaxia's holographic image flickered as he shifted in his seat, are you certain that will be enough? 
They seem to be quite stubborn. Zelthor's face twisted into a grotesque smile. Oh, I have no doubt that they will resist, but in the end everyone has a breaking point, and I will take great pleasure in finding theirs. As the meeting drew to a close, Zelthor turned his attention back to the surveillance feeds. He watched as Lyra and her fellow rebels continued their plotting, blissfully unaware of the net that was tightening around them. He would let them continue their little game for now, let them think they had a chance. But in the end, he knew that he would be the one to emerge victorious. The resistance would be crushed and the truth about humanity would be buried once and for all. In the depths of the Thurinian detention facility, Zarek and Korvash huddled together in their cell, their bodies battered and bruised from the latest round of interrogations. The air was thick with the stench of sweat and blood, and the only light came from a single, flickering bulb overhead. Korvash groaned as he shifted his weight, his muscles screaming in protest. I don't know how much more of this I can take, he muttered, his voice hoarse and strained. Zarek reached out and clasped his friend's hand, his grip firm and reassuring. We can't give up now, he said, his eyes blazing with determination. We have to stay strong, for the sake of the truth. Korvash nodded, his jaw clenched tight. I know, but it's hard, Zarek. They're wearing us down bit by bit. I can feel my resolve starting to crack. Zarek leaned in closer, his voice dropping to a whisper. Then we lean on each other. We draw strength from our bond, from our shared purpose. They can break our bodies, but they can never break our spirits. As if on cue, the cell door slammed open, and two hulking Thurinian guards stormed into the room. They grabbed Zarek and Korvash roughly by the arms, hauling them to their feet. Time for another chat, boys, one of the guards sneered, his breath hot and fetid against Zarek's face. Let's see if we can't loosen those tongues of yours a little more today. Zarek and Korvash exchanged a brief, defiant glance as they were dragged from the cell, their feet stumbling over the rough stone floor. They knew what awaited them in the interrogation room. More pain, more suffering, more attempts to break their will. But they also knew that they would endure. They had to, for the sake of the truth and for the sake of all those who were counting on them to expose the lies and deception that had plagued the galaxy for so long. As they were thrown into the harsh, unforgiving light of the interrogation room, Zarik and Korvash steeled themselves for the ordeal to come. They would not yield, no matter what their captors threw at them. And somewhere out there, beyond the walls of their prison, they knew that the resistance was growing. Lyra and her allies were fighting on, fueled by the knowledge that Zarik and Korvash's resilience and defiance had become a symbol of hope for all those who sought to uncover the truth. The battle was far from over, but with each passing day the resistance grew stronger, and Zarik and Korvash knew that no matter what happened to them, their sacrifice would not be in vain. The truth would prevail, and the galaxy would never be the same. In a dimly lit safe house on the outskirts of the Galactic Academy, Dr. Zal R. hunched over a flickering holographic display, his eyes were bloodshot from exhaustion as his fingers danced across the interface, working tirelessly to decrypt a series of highly classified files he'd managed to smuggle out during his escape. Lyra paced the room behind him, her mind racing with plans for the impending rescue attempt. She glanced at the chrono on the wall, knowing that every passing minute brought them closer to the critical moment when they would put everything on the line to free Zarik and Korvash. Suddenly Dr. Zala let out a sharp gasp. Lyra whirled around, her heart pounding. What is it? What have you found? The Thurinian historian's face was ashen as he stared at the display. It's worse than we ever imagined, he whispered hoarsely. The suppression of human history. It's just the tip of the iceberg. Lyra moved to his side, her eyes scanning the decrypted files. What she saw made her blood run cold, the documents laid bare a vast conspiracy, orchestrated by the Thurinians and a cabal of powerful galactic figures to manipulate events and sow conflict across the galaxy for centuries. They've been pulling the strings all along, Dr. Zalar said, 
his voice trembling with a mixture of rage and disbelief. Every war, every political upheaval, it's all been part of their plan to maintain their grip on power and keep the other species in line. Lyra felt a wave of nausea wash over her as the implication sank in. The Thurinians' efforts to suppress the truth about humanity's potential were just one piece of a much larger puzzle. They weren't just trying to rewrite history, they were actively working to prevent any species from challenging their dominance. We have to get this information out, Lyra said, her voice steely with determination. The galaxy needs to know the truth. Dr. Zal'ar nodded grimly. And we will, but first we need to rescue Zar'ik and Korvash. They're the key to all of this. With their testimony and the evidence we've gathered, we can blow this conspiracy wide open. Lyra turned to face the other members of the Resistance who had gathered in the safe house. She saw the same mix of shock, anger, and resolve etched on their faces. They had all joined this fight believing that they were working to expose a cover-up and set the historical record straight. But now they understood that the stakes were far higher than any of them had ever imagined. Listen up, Lyra said, her voice ringing out with authority. We've just learned that the Thurinians' actions are part of a much larger conspiracy— They've been manipulating the galaxy for centuries, all to maintain their own power and keep the rest of us under their thumb. A murmur of outrage rippled through the room, but Lyra pressed on. This changes everything. We're not just fighting to free our friends or reveal the truth about humanity's past. We're fighting for the freedom and autonomy of every species in the galaxy. She paused, letting her words sink in. I won't lie to you. The odds are stacked against us, and the dangers we face are greater than ever. But I also know that each and every one of you is here because you believe in something greater than yourselves. You believe in the power of truth, justice, and the right of all beings to determine their own destiny. Lyra's eyes blazed with conviction as she looked around the room. So I ask you now, knowing what we know, and understanding the risks we face, are you still with me? Will you stand with Zarek, Korovash, and all those who have been oppressed and manipulated by this conspiracy? For a moment there was silence. Then, one by one, the members of the Resistance stepped forward, their faces set with grim determination. We're with you, a Zygorian student named Kilian said, speaking for all of them. To the end. Lyra nodded, a fierce smile tugging at her lips. Then let's get to work. We have a rescue to plan and a galaxy to save. As the Resistance members began to mobilize, Dr. Zal'ar pulled Lyra aside. There's something else you need to know, he said quietly. The files suggest that the Thurinians' ultimate goal is to prevent any species, particularly humanity, from challenging their authority. They see humans as the greatest threat to their power. Lyra's brow furrowed. But why? What is it about humans that scares them so much? Dr. Zalar shook his head. I don't know for certain, but there are hints in the files. References to humanity's unique adaptability, their resilience in the face of adversity, and their uncanny ability to unite and rise above their differences in times of crisis. He met Lera's gaze, his expression grave. Whatever the reason, it's clear that the Thuwarinians will stop at nothing to keep humanity— and any other species that might threaten their dominance, under their control. And that's why we must succeed, not just for Zarek and Korvash, but for the sake of the entire galaxy. Lyra nodded, her resolve hardening like steel. She turned back to the Resistance members, who were now poring over maps and schematics of the detention facility, discussing strategies and contingencies. As she watched them work, Lyra felt a flicker of hope amidst the darkness. They were up against an enemy that had controlled the galaxy for centuries, a foe that would not hesitate to crush them if given the chance. But they had something the Thurinians and their allies could never understand, the unbreakable bonds of friendship, loyalty, and a shared commitment to the truth. And with that knowledge burning bright in their hearts, Lyra knew that they would find a way to prevail, no matter the odds. For the sake of Zarik, Korvash, and all those who had been silenced and oppressed, they would fight on until the truth was finally set free. Lyra's heart raced as she reviewed the plan one last time with her team. 
they huddled around a holographic display of the Thurinian detention facility, marking entry points and escape routes. Zarek and Korvash's lives hung in the balance, and they couldn't afford any mistakes. Remember, we stick to the plan, Lara said, her voice steady despite the tension in the room. Kil'an, you're in charge of hacking the security systems. Nixara, you'll lead the diversion team, and I'll take point on the extraction. The team nodded, their faces etched with determination. They checked their weapons and gear, making sure everything was in order. There was no room for error. As they approached the facility, Lyra felt a surge of adrenaline. She signaled to Kilan, who began working his magic on the complex's defenses. The Zigorian's fingers flew across his datapad, his brow furrowed in concentration. I'm in, he whispered over the comm. Security systems are down, you've got a clear path to the detention block. Lyra and her team moved swiftly, their footsteps echoing in the eerily quiet halls. Suddenly an alarm blared, and the sound of heavy boots filled the air. Nick Zara now, Lyra hissed. On cue, explosions rocked the far side of the facility, drawing the attention of the guards. Lyra and her team seized the opportunity, racing towards the detention block. They rounded a corner and came face to face with a group of heavily armed Thurinian soldiers. Blaster fire erupted, filling the air with the acrid smell of ozone. Lyra dropped to one knee, firing her weapon with deadly precision. Her team followed suit, taking down the guards one by one. Keep moving, Lyra shouted, pushing forward through the smoke and debris. They reached the cell block, where Zarik and Korvash were being held. Kilan worked frantically to override the lock, his fingers a blur on the keypad. The door hissed open, revealing the two battered but defiant students. Zarik looked up, his eyes widening in surprise and relief. Lyra, how did you... No time to explain, Lyra cut him off, tossing him a blaster. We're getting you out of here. Korvash grabbed the weapon, a grim smile on his face. Let's make them pay. They raced back through the facility, fighting off waves of security drones and Thurinian reinforcements. The air was thick with the smell of burnt metal and the deafening sound of blaster fire. As they neared the exit, a figure stepped out from the shadows. It was Professor Zelthor, flanked by a squad of elite soldiers. Leaving so soon, he sneered, his eyes glinting with malice. I'm afraid I can't allow that. Lyra and her team formed a protective circle around Zarik and Korvash, their weapons trained on the Thurinians. You've lost, Zelthor, Lyra spat. The truth will come out and your lies will be exposed. The professor laughed, a cruel, mirthless sound. You have no idea what you're up against, child. The truth will die with you. He raised his hand and the soldiers opened fire. Lyra and her team fought back with everything they had, but they were outnumbered and outgunned. Just as all seemed lost, a series of explosions rocked the facility. A squadron of sleek, unidentified ships descended from the sky, raining down fire on the Thurinian forces. What the hell? Korvash yelled over the chaos. Zautik stared at the ships, his eyes widening in recognition. There was something about their design, the way they moved, that felt strangely familiar. It can't be, he whispered. The mysterious ships provided cover fire, allowing Lyra and her team to make a break for their own vessel. They scrambled aboard, Zarek and Korvash collapsing in exhaustion as the hatch sealed behind them. As they rocketed away from the facility, Zarek couldn't shake the feeling that their unlikely saviors were somehow connected to the truth they had been fighting to uncover. He stared out the viewport at the retreating ships, a thousand questions racing through his mind. For now they were safe, but the fight was far from over. With the evidence they had gathered and the knowledge of the conspiracy that threatened the galaxy, Zarek knew that they had to keep pushing forward. The truth was out there, and they would stop at nothing to bring it to light. The battered resistance ship shuddered as it dropped out of hyperspace. Lyra guided it towards a small, nondescript moon, its pockmarked surface concealing a hidden rebel outpost. As the ship touched down in a camouflaged hangar bay, Zarik and Korvash let out a collective sigh of relief. 
They were bruised, exhausted, but alive. The hangar doors rumbled shut behind them as the group disembarked. Lyra led them through a series of winding corridors, deeper into the heart of the base. They finally emerged in a large, dimly lit room, its walls lined with outdated computer terminals and flickering holographic displays. Waiting for them, hunched over a central table, was Dr. Zalar. The elderly Thurinian looked up as they entered, his eyes heavy with fatigue and grim determination. You made it, he said, his voice rough with emotion. I knew you would. Zarek stepped forward, clasping the doctor's hand in a firm grip. Thanks to you and the information you provided, we wouldn't have stood a chance without it. Dr. Zalar nodded, then gestured to the table. It was strewn with data pads, their screens filled with dense blocks of text and complex schematics. I've been poring over the files we managed to decrypt. What I've found... He trailed off, shaking his head. It's worse than we ever imagined. The group gathered around the table, their faces illuminated by the eerie glow of the screens. Dr. Zalar began to explain, his voice low and urgent. The Thurinian suppression of human history, the false narrative they've been propagating, it's all part of a much larger plan, a conspiracy that spans centuries and involves some of the most powerful figures in the galaxy. As he spoke, he brought up a series of images on the main holographic display. They showed shadowy meetings between Thurinian officials and representatives from other races, secret facilities hidden on remote worlds, and vast networks of financial and political influence. They've been manipulating events, orchestrating conflicts, all to maintain their grip on power. And at the heart of it all is a deep-seated fear of humanity, of what humans might be capable of if given the chance to reach their full potential. Korvash leaned forward, his brow furrowed. But why? What is it about humans that terrifies them so much? Dr. Zalar shook his head. I don't have all the answers. But from what I've been able to piece together, it seems they believe that humans possess some kind of innate resilience, a unique ability to adapt and overcome that makes them a threat to the established order. The Thurinians will do anything to prevent that threat from being realized. Zarek felt a chill run down his spine as he stared at the evidence before them. The scope of the conspiracy was staggering, the implications almost too vast to comprehend. But one thing kept nagging at the back of his mind. The ships that helped us escape, he said, his voice barely above a whisper. There was something about them, something familiar. Lyra nodded. I noticed it too. Their design, their tactics, it was almost as if... Tycho, they were human, Zarek finished, the realization hitting him like a thunderbolt. The room fell silent as the weight of that possibility sank in. If there were humans out there, advanced enough to challenge the Thurinians, it could change everything. Zarek turned to the others, his eyes blazing with determination. We have to find them, those ships, whoever they are. They could be the key to all of this, to exposing the truth and bringing down the conspiracy. But some of the resistance fighters looked uncertain. Kil'an, the Zygorian hacker, spoke up, his voice hesitant. Are you sure that's wise? We barely escaped with our lives, and now you want to go chasing after some phantom ships. It could be a trap, or worse. Zarek shook his head vehemently. No, this is our chance, don't you see? This is what we've been fighting for, the truth that could change the galaxy. We can't turn back now, not when we're so close. Korvash stepped up beside his friend, placing a hand on his shoulder. Zarek's right, we've come too far to give up. And if there's even a chance these ships can help us, we have to take it. The room erupted into a heated debate, voices rising as each member of the resistance weighed in. Some sided with Zarek and Korvash, arguing passionately for the pursuit of the truth at any cost. Others, like Kilan, urged caution, warning of the dangers of overextending themselves. Through it all, Lyra remained silent, her gaze fixed on the holographic display. Finally, she spoke, her voice quiet but firm. I understand the risks, but I also know that we can't let this opportunity slip away. We've already sacrificed so much, and if we don't see this through, then what was it all for? 
She turned to face the group, her eyes locked with Zarix. I say we do it. We find those ships and we uncover the truth no matter where it leads us. Who's with me? One by one, the resistance fighters nodded their assent. Some were still hesitant, their faces etched with worry, but in the end, their determination won out. They had come too far to turn back now. As the group began to plan their next move, Zarek felt a renewed sense of purpose coursing through him. The road ahead would be perilous, the challenges immense. But with his friends by his side, and the promise of the truth waiting to be uncovered, he knew they would find a way. No matter the cost, they would fight on, for the sake of the galaxy and for the future of humanity itself. The resistance huddled around the holographic display, watching the news feed with a mix of awe and apprehension. The images showed a gargantuan object, its surface a patchwork of metallic plates and pulsing lights, hanging in the void of space like a silent sentinel. It was unlike anything they had ever seen before, dwarfing even the largest Thuarinian warships. What the hell is that thing? Korvash muttered, his eyes wide with a mix of fear and fascination. Lyra shook her head, her brow furrowed in concentration as she scanned the incoming data streams. The Galactic Academy is calling it the Anomaly. They've sent a fleet of probes and recon ships to investigate, but so far they haven't been able to get a clear reading on its composition or purpose. Zarek leaned forward, his gaze fixed on the mysterious object. There was something about it that called to him, a nagging sensation that he couldn't quite place. I think it's connected to humanity, he said quietly, his voice barely audible over the hum of the display. The others turned to look at him, their expressions ranging from skepticism to curiosity. What makes you say that? Kilan asked, his head tilted to the side. Zarek shook his head, struggling to put his thoughts into words. I can't explain it, but there's something familiar about it, like a memory just out of reach. And think about it. Why would something like this appear now, just as we're starting to uncover the truth about humanity's past? Lera nodded slowly, her eyes narrowing in thought. You might be onto something, Zarek. The timing is too convenient to be a coincidence. We need to find out more about this thing, and fast. She turned to her team, her voice taking on a note of urgency. All right, people, let's get to work. Kilan, I want you to tap into every secure channel you can find. See if you can intercept any communications between the Galactic Academy and the Thurinian authorities. Nixara, reach out to our contacts in the Outer Rim. If anyone's heard whispers about this thing, it'll be them. The team sprang into action, their fingers flying across consoles and data pads as they worked to gather intelligence. Zarek joined them, his mind racing with possibilities. If he was right, and the object was somehow connected to humanity, then it could hold the key to unlocking the secrets of their past, and maybe even their future. Hours turned into days as the resistance poured over the data they had collected, piecing together fragments of information like a cosmic puzzle. They learned that the Thurinians had dispatched a heavily armed fleet to the object's location, led by none other than Professor Zelthor himself. The Galactic Academy, meanwhile, had convened an emergency session to discuss the implications of the discovery with rumors swirling of a possible cover-up. Zarek grew increasingly frustrated as the days wore on, feeling like they were no closer to unraveling the mystery. He paced the length of the Resistance's hideout, his mind churning with unanswered questions. Korvash watched him with concern, finally stepping forward to place a hand on his friend's shoulder. Hey, we'll figure this out, he said, his voice low and reassuring. We didn't come this far to give up now. Zarek nodded, taking a deep breath to calm his nerves. I know, it's just... I can't shake the feeling that we're running out of time. Like whatever's happening with that object, it's going to change everything. As if on cue, Lyra burst into the room, her face flushed with excitement. Guys, you need to see this, she said, her words tumbling out in a rush. Kilan just intercepted a transmission from the Thurinian fleet. They found something inside the object, something big. The team gathered around the display once more, watching in stunned silence as the grainy image resolved into a cavernous chamber, its walls lined with strange, glowing symbols. In the center of the room stood a towering structure, 
its surface shimmering with an otherworldly light. What is that? Korvash breathed, his eyes wide with wonder. Zarek leaned forward, his heart pounding in his chest as he scanned the symbols on the walls. They were unlike anything he had ever seen before, and yet there was something hauntingly familiar about them, like a long-forgotten language whispering to him from across the ages. And then, with a sudden startling clarity, he understood. The symbols weren't just random glyphs. They were a message, a testament to humanity's true legacy, a legacy of resilience, of defiance in the face of overwhelming odds, a legacy that had been hidden away for centuries, waiting for someone to unlock its secrets. Zarek turned to his friends, his eyes blazing with a newfound determination. We have to get inside that object, he said, his voice steady and sure. Whatever's in there, it's the key to everything, to the truth about humanity, and to stopping the Thurinians once and for all. Lyra nodded, her expression grim but resolute. Then that's what we'll do. We'll find a way to get inside, no matter what it takes. The galaxy deserves to know the truth, and we're going to make sure they hear it. As the team began to plan their next move, Zarshik felt a surge of hope rising within him. They were on the brink of something momentous, something that could change the course of history itself, and with his friends by his side, he knew that they would stop at nothing to see it through. The Thurinians may have tried to bury the truth, but they could never extinguish the spark of human resilience. And now, with the discovery of the mysterious object, that spark had become a flame, a beacon of hope that would light the way to a brighter future for all. The Thurinians wasted no time launching their propaganda blitz. Every news feed, every hollow bulletin, every public display across the galaxy was flooded with dire warnings about the Harbinger and the human threat. Grainy, distorted images of the mysterious ship filled the airwaves, accompanied by ominous narration that painted the humans as a violent, unpredictable species bent on galactic domination. Do not be fooled by their appearance, the Thurinian spokeswoman intoned, her voice dripping with feigned concern. These humans are not like us. They are a primitive, savage race, driven by aggression and a lust for power. They will stop at nothing to impose their will upon the galaxy, and we must stand united against them. The Galactic Academy, once a bastion of knowledge and impartiality, quickly fell in line with the Thurinian narrative. Zarek watched in disbelief as his former professors and mentors took to the podium, denouncing him and his friends as misguided radicals who had been manipulated by the humans' insidious agenda. It is with a heavy heart that we must condemn the actions of Zarek, Korvash and their associates, Professor Zelthor declared, his face a mask of sorrow and regret. They have allowed themselves to be seduced by the humans' lies and false promises, and now they seek to undermine the very foundations of our galactic order. We urge all member species to reject their dangerous ideology and stand with us in defense of our shared values. Across the galaxy, public opinion began to shift. Species that had once been sympathetic to the resistance now viewed them with suspicion and fear. Allies who had pledged their support quietly withdrew, unwilling to risk the wrath of the Thurinians and the Academy. Zarek and Korvash, their faces plastered across wanted posters on every world, were forced into hiding. They moved from one safe house to another, always one step ahead of the Thurinian authorities who sought to bring them to justice. In their absence, Lyra and her team worked tirelessly to counter the Thurinians' propaganda. They hacked into communication networks, hijacking broadcasts to share the truth about humanity's history and the Thurinians' deception. They staged daring public demonstrations, projecting holograms of the evidence they had uncovered onto the faculties of government buildings and academy campuses. But it was an uphill battle. The Thurinians' grip on the media was too strong, their influence too pervasive. For every truth the resistance managed to reveal, a dozen more lies sprang up in its place. In the shadows, Zarek and Korvash met with Lyra and her inner circle, plotting their next move. 
They knew that time was running out, that the Thurinians were pushing the galaxy closer to war with each passing day. We have to find a way to make contact with the Harbinger, Zarek insisted, his eyes blazing with determination. If we can just talk to them, convince them to share their side of the story, maybe we can turn the tide of public opinion. Lyra nodded, her expression grim. It won't be easy. The Thurinians have the ship surrounded, and they're jamming all communications in and out. But we have to try. The future of the galaxy depends on it. As the Resistance prepared for their most daring operation yet, the galaxy held its breath, waiting to see which side would blink first. The Thurinians, with their vast armada and their iron grip on the media, seemed an unstoppable force. But the Resistance had something the Thurinians could never understand, the unbreakable spirit of those who fight for truth and justice, no matter the odds. In the end, it would come down to a battle not just of weapons and ships, but of ideas and ideals. And in that battle, Zarek knew, the Resistance would never surrender. The galaxy froze, as every comm unit, viewscreen and hollow projector lit up with the transmission from the Harbinger. The human woman on the screen had an aura of quiet strength, her eyes fierce with determination as she began to speak. People of the galaxy, my name is Captain Ilara Voss of the human ship Harbinger. I come to you with a message of vital importance, one that will shake the very foundations of the galactic order you have come to know. Her voice was steady, carrying the weight of centuries of hidden history. The truth has been kept from you for far too long. Humanity was not always the broken, scattered race you see today. Once, we were a thriving civilization, with advanced technology and a peaceful way of life. We reached for the stars eager to explore and forge connections with other species. Captain Voss's expression darkened. But our hopes were shattered by a brutal betrayal. The Thurinians, the very species you now look to for guidance and leadership, saw our potential as a threat to their power. They feared what we could become, and so they set out to destroy us. Images flashed across the screen, showing the once vibrant human worlds now reduced to ruins. The Thurinians orchestrated a war against humanity, turning our allies against us with lies and manipulation. They unleashed advanced weapons, decimating our cities and slaughtering our people. We fought bravely, but we were outmatched and outnumbered. Tears glistened in Captain Voss's eyes as she recounted the painful history. In the end, we were defeated. Our homeworld and colonies were destroyed, our survivors scattered across the galaxy. And the Thurinians rewrote history, erasing our accomplishments and painting us as a weak, primitive species. The captain's voice grew stronger, filled with righteous anger. But we endured. In exile, we rebuilt our strength, holding on to the hope that one day the truth would be revealed. And now that day has come. She leaned forward, her gaze intense. People of the galaxy, I implore you to reject the lies you have been fed. The Thurinians are not your benevolent protectors, but manipulators who will stop at nothing to maintain their grip on power. They have stolen our history, our very identity, and they will do the same to you if left unchecked. Captain Voss's voice softened, filled with empathy. I know this truth is difficult to accept. It challenges everything you have been taught. But I ask you to look beyond the propaganda, to see the cracks in the facade the Thurinians have constructed. Question their motives, their actions, and you will begin to see the truth. She straightened, her resolve unwavering. Humanity stands ready to reclaim our place in the galaxy, to forge a future based on truth, justice, and cooperation. We extend our hand to all those who have been oppressed, misled, and exploited by the Thurinians. Together we can build a better future, one free from the shackles of their lies. As the transmission ended, the galaxy erupted in chaos. Across countless worlds, individuals and entire species grappled with the revelations, their long-held beliefs shattered. Some clung to the Thurinians' version of events, dismissing the Harbinger's message as a hoax or a ploy. But others, long skeptical of the ruling powers, saw the truth in Captain Voss's words. In the Resistance's hidden base, 
Zarik and Korvash watched the broadcast with a mix of awe and vindication. They had risked everything to uncover the truth, and now it was laid bare for all to see. The road ahead would be perilous, as the Thurinians would surely stop at nothing to maintain their grip on power. But with the Harbinger's message, the Resistance had gained a powerful ally and a renewed sense of purpose. Zarik turned to his friend, his eyes alight with determination. This is it, Korvash, the moment we've been waiting for. Humanity has broken their silence, and the galaxy will never be the same. Korvash nodded, his expression mirroring Zarik's resolve. We've come too far to back down now. It's time to take the fight to the Thurinians and expose their lies once and for all. As word of the Harbinger's message spread, the Resistance saw a surge in support from across the galaxy. Species that had once been content to follow the Thurinians' lead now questioned their allegiance, and whispers of rebellion grew louder with each passing day. Lydra and her team worked tirelessly to coordinate the growing movement, reaching out to potential allies and planning their next moves. They knew that the Thurinians would not take this challenge to their power lightly, and they had to be prepared for the battles to come. For Zarek and Korvash, the Harbinger's revelation was a vindication of all they had fought for. They emerged from hiding, ready to stand at the forefront of the resistance and rally support for the human cause. The truth was out there, and they would not rest until the galaxy was free from the Thurinians' lies and oppression. The stage was set for a confrontation that would determine the fate of the galaxy. Humanity, once thought to be a footnote in history, now stood poised to reclaim their rightful place among the stars, and Zarek, Korvash, and the Resistance would be there every step of the way, fighting for the truth and the future they believed in. The Harbinger's message had sent the galaxy into a frenzy. Species that had once looked upon humanity with disdain now saw them in a new light. Captain Voss's words had struck a chord, resonating with those who had long suffered under the Thurinians' oppressive rule. In the days that followed, the Harbinger began to share more of humanity's long-lost knowledge. Captain Voss herself appeared on the ship's communication screens, her eyes alight with the promise of a better future. People of the galaxy, she began her voice strong and clear, for too long the Thurinians have kept you in the dark, hoarding knowledge and technology that could benefit us all, but no more. She gestured to a holographic display behind her, which flickered to life with schematics and diagrams of advanced human technology. Before our exile, humanity made great strides in energy production, propulsion and medicine. We developed clean, sustainable power sources that could provide for entire planets. We created propulsion systems that allowed us to traverse the stars with ease, and our medical breakthroughs could cure diseases once thought untreatable. The display shifted, showing images of lush green planets and healthy, thriving populations. This knowledge is not meant to be hidden away. It is meant to be shared, to uplift all species and create a better future for everyone. Captain Voss's expression grew serious. But this future can only be realized if we stand together against the Thurinians. Their rule has brought nothing but oppression and stagnation. It is time for a change. Across the galaxy, her words ignited a spark of hope. Species that had once been content to follow the Thurinians' lead began to question their allegiance. The promise of a brighter tomorrow, one free from the shackles of their oppressors, was too tempting to ignore. On planet after planet, people took to the streets in open defiance of the Thurinians. They marched, they chanted, they raised their voices in a united cry for freedom. The resistance, once a small underground movement, found itself flooded with new recruits, each eager to play their part in the fight against tyranny. Zarek and Korvash, their names now synonymous with the rebellion, worked tirelessly to coordinate the growing coalition. They met with leaders from across the galaxy, forging alliances and planning their next moves. The Thurinians are strong, Zarek said, addressing a room full of resistance fighters, but they are not invincible. We have the Harbinger and its technology on our side. We have the support of the people, and most importantly, we have the truth. Korvash nodded, 
his expression grim. The Thurinians have built their empire on lies and manipulation, but their facade is crumbling. With each day, more and more people are seeing through their deception. The resistance, bolstered by their newfound allies, launched a series of daring attacks against Thurinian military installations and key infrastructure. They struck swiftly and decisively, using the element of surprise to their advantage. In one such attack, Zarik and Korvash led a team in infiltrating a heavily guarded Thurinian weapons facility. They moved silently through the corridors, their weapons at the ready, until they reached the main control room. Plant the charges, Zarik whispered, his eyes scanning the room for any signs of trouble. We need to destroy this place before they can use these weapons against the rebellion. Korvash nodded, already setting to work. Within minutes the charges were set and the team was racing back the way they had come. They barely made it out before the facility erupted in a massive fireball, the shockwave knocking them off their feet. As they picked themselves up, Zarek couldn't help but grin. Another blow against the Thurinians, he said, dusting himself off. But there's still work to be done. With each successful mission, the resistance grew stronger and the Thurinians grew weaker. The once unassailable empire was crumbling from within as more and more of its subjects turned against it. And at the heart of it all was the Harbinger, a shining beacon of hope in the darkness. Captain Voss and her crew worked closely with Zarek and Korvash, sharing their knowledge and technology with the Resistance. Together they began to plan for a future beyond the Thurinians' rule. A future where all species could live in peace and prosperity, free from the chains of oppression. It would not be an easy road. The Thurinians would not give up their power without a fight. But for the first time in a long time, there was hope. Hope for a better tomorrow, a brighter future. And Zarik and Korvash knew that they would stop at nothing to make that future a reality. The Thurinians' desperation to crush the rebellion drove them to commit an unspeakable atrocity. They launched a biological weapon at the planet Zephyria, a world that had openly declared its support for the human cause. The deadly agent spread rapidly through the atmosphere, infiltrating every home, every building, every crevice of the planet's surface. Within hours, millions of Zephyrians lay dead, or dying, their bodies ravaged by the horrific effects of the Thurinian bioweapon. Scenes of unimaginable horror played out across Zephyria. Parents cradled their children as they drew their last labored breaths. Friends and loved ones watched helplessly as those dear to them succumbed to the devastating illness. The streets were littered with the bodies of the fallen, a grim testament to the Thurinians' cruelty and their willingness to go to any lengths to maintain their grip on power. As news of the atrocity spread, the galactic community reacted with shock and outrage. Even those who had previously been neutral in the conflict could no longer ignore the Thurinians' brutality, Species that had once been content to sit on the sidelines now flocked to join the resistance, their anger and disgust at the Thurinians' actions driving them to take a stand against tyranny. Zarek and Korvash, their hearts heavy with the weight of the lives lost on Zephyria, knew that they had to act quickly to prevent further tragedies. They turned to the Harbinger and its crew, desperate for a way to counter the Thurinians' bioweapons. Captain Voss, her expression grim but determined, addressed the resistance leaders. We have a technology that can neutralize the Thurinians' biological weapons. It's a complex system that creates a sort of shield against the deadly agents, rendering them harmless. We've been working on it for some time, but we never thought we'd need to use it on such a scale. Zarek felt a glimmer of hope amidst the darkness. Can we distribute this technology to our allies? Protect them from further attacks? Yes, Captain Voss replied, but it won't be easy. The system requires specialized equipment and trained personnel to operate. We'll need to work quickly to get it into the hands of those who need it most. Korovash nodded, his resolve hardening. We'll do whatever it takes. We can't let the Thurinians claim any more innocent lives. The resistance leaders worked tirelessly to distribute the Harbinger's anti-bioweapon technology to their allies, coordinating with the ship's crew to train local forces in its use. 
They also organized relief efforts for Zephyria, sending teams of medics and supplies to aid the survivors and begin the long process of rebuilding. As the conflict continued to escalate, the Harbinger's crew took on a new role, training a fresh generation of resistance fighters. They shared their advanced combat techniques and technologies, honing the skills of the rebels and equipping them with the tools they needed to stand against the Thurinians' might. Zarik and Korvash found themselves at the forefront of this new phase of the rebellion, their experiences and leadership skills invaluable in guiding the growing resistance movement. They worked closely with the Harbinger's crew, learning all they could about human tactics and strategies and adapting them to the unique challenges they faced. In the training camps, the resistance fighters honed their skills under the watchful eyes of the Harbinger's crew. They learned to wield advanced human weapons, to navigate the chaos of the battlefield with precision and grace, and to work together as a cohesive unit, each member playing a vital role in the success of the whole. Korvash, his eyes blazing with determination, addressed a group of new recruits. The Thurinians think they can break us with their cruelty, their brutality, but they underestimate the strength of our resolve, the power of our unity. We will fight, and we will win because we have something they can never understand, the unwavering belief in the righteousness of our cause. As the resistance grew in strength and numbers, the Thuarinians found themselves increasingly on the defensive. The once unassailable empire began to crack under the weight of the rebellion's relentless attacks, their hold on power slipping with each passing day. But even as they struggled to maintain control, the Thuarinians refused to surrender. They clung to their dominance with a desperate ferocity, lashing out with ever greater violence and cruelty in a bid to crush the resistance once and for all. Zarek, Korvash and the Harbinger's crew knew that the road ahead would be long and perilous, but they also knew that they had no choice but to press on, to fight for the freedom and justice that had been denied to the galaxy for so long. With each battle, each victory, they moved closer to their ultimate goal, a future free from Thurinian tyranny where all species could live in harmony and peace. The Thurinian fleet emerged from hyperspace, a swarm of sleek, menacing warships bristling with advanced weaponry. Their hulls gleamed in the starlight, a cold and unforgiving sight that sent shivers down the spines of the resistance fighters aboard the Harbinger. Captain Voss stood on the bridge, her eyes narrowed as she surveyed the incoming threat. They're throwing everything they have at us, she said, her voice steady despite the gravity of the situation. But we've come too far to back down now, prepare for battle. The Harbinger's crew sprang into action, manning their stations and readying the ship's defences. The hum of the energy shields intensified as they were pushed to their limits, absorbing the initial barrage of Thurinian weapons fire. The deck shuddered beneath their feet, a testament to the sheer power of the enemy's assault. Zarek and Korvash, now seasoned fighters and trusted members of the Harbinger's crew, took their positions at the tactical stations. They worked in tandem, coordinating the ship's counterattacks and directing the resistance fighters in their own vessels. The battle raged on, with the Harbinger and its allies fighting valiantly against the overwhelming Thurinian forces. Explosions lit up the void of space as ships on both sides were hit, their hulls rupturing and spilling debris into the vacuum. The Harbinger shook violently as a barrage of missiles slammed into its shields, causing alarms to blare throughout the ship. Shields at thirty percent, Corva shouted over the din of battle. We can't take much more of this. Captain Voss gritted her teeth, her mind racing as she searched for a solution. Suddenly her eyes widened with realization. The Thanix cannon, she whispered, before turning to her crew. Divert all available power to the Thanix cannon. It's our only chance. The crew worked frantically to comply, rerouting energy from non-essential systems to the ship's secret weapon. The Thanix cannon, a marvel of human ingenuity and engineering, began to glow with an eerie blue light as it charged up. The Thurinian ships, sensing the shift in the Harbinger's energy signature, intensified their attack, determined to destroy the human vessel before it could unleash its devastating weapon. The shields flickered and strained under the onslaught on the verge of collapse. Thanix cannon ready, Zarek reported, his voice tense with anticipation. 
Captain Voss nodded, her eyes locked on the viewscreen. Fire! A blinding beam of energy erupted from the Harbinger's bow, cutting through the void of space like a searing lance. It struck the lead Thurinian ship, piercing its shields as if they were paper and carving a molten path through its hull. The ship exploded in a brilliant flash of light, its remains scattering across the battlefield. The Thurinian fleet, stunned by the sudden and devastating loss of their flagship, faltered in their attack. The resistance, seizing the opportunity, pressed their advantage, with the Harbinger at the forefront. The Thanix cannon fired again and again, each shot finding its mark and turning Thurinian warships into drifting husks. As the battle turned in their favour, the resistance fighters let out a cheer, their spirits soaring with the realisation that victory was within reach. The Thurinian fleet, battered and broken, began to retreat, their once proud ships limping away from the battlefield in disarray. On the bridge of the Harbinger, Captain Voss allowed herself a small smile of triumph. We did it, she said, her voice filled with a mix of relief and determination. But this is only the beginning. We must press on, strike while the Thurinians are vulnerable. It's time to take back what they stole from us, from all of us. Zarek and Korvash exchanged a look of resolve, knowing that the road ahead would be long and perilous. But with the Harbinger and its crew at their side, and the resistance growing stronger every day, they knew that anything was possible. The light of hope, once a faint glimmer, now burned brightly, a beacon for all those who yearned for freedom and justice in a galaxy too long oppressed. As news of the Harbinger's victory spread, resistance cells across the galaxy sprang into action. Emboldened by the human ship's success and the revelation of the Thurinian's vulnerability, they launched a series of coordinated attacks on enemy strongholds and key infrastructure. Planets that had long suffered under Thurinian rule rose up in rebellion, their people taking to the streets and demanding an end to the tyranny that had defined their lives for generations. The Thurinians, reeling from their defeat and facing an unprecedented wave of defiance, struggled to maintain control. Their once unassailable grip on power was slipping, and they knew it. In a desperate attempt to quash the growing rebellion, they resorted to increasingly brutal tactics, unleashing their forces on civilian populations and destroying entire cities in retribution. But the resistance would not be cowed. With the Harbinger and its advanced technology at their side, they met the Thurinians' brutality with unwavering resolve. They struck back hard and fast, liberating dozens of worlds and establishing safe havens for those fleeing the conflict. The ranks of the resistance swelled with each passing day as more and more people joined the fight for freedom. Zarik and Korvash found themselves at the forefront of the liberation efforts, their names becoming synonymous with hope and defiance. They led daring raids on Thurinian outposts, sabotaged enemy supply lines, and rescued countless prisoners from the clutches of their oppressors. Their bravery and tenacity inspired others to take up arms, forging a sense of unity and common purpose among the disparate species of the galaxy. As the resistance chipped away at the Thurinians' power, fractures began to appear within the enemy's own ranks. Some, disillusioned by the brutality of their leaders and the revelations of humanity's true history, defected to the resistance bringing with them valuable intelligence and resources. Others, sensing the tide turning against them, simply fled, seeking to escape the coming reckoning. Through it all, the Harbinger remained a beacon of hope, a symbol of humanity's resilience and the galaxy's determination to break free from the shackles of oppression. Its crew, led by Captain Voss, worked tirelessly to support the Resistance, sharing their knowledge and technology with their allies, and adapting their strategies to counter the Thurinians' ever-evolving tactics. There were setbacks and losses, moments when the struggle seemed all but lost, but the resistance, united in their cause and driven by the indomitable human spirit, pressed on, determined to see their mission through to the end. They knew that the road to true freedom would be long and arduous, that the Thurinians would not relinquish their power without a fight, but they also knew that they had something worth fighting for a future in which all species could live in harmony, free from the yoke of tyranny and oppression. And so the battle raged on, with Zarik, Korvash and the Resistance leading the charge. 
The galaxy, once a place of darkness and despair, was now alight with the fires of rebellion, a testament to the unbreakable will of those who dared to dream of a better tomorrow. The road ahead was uncertain, but one thing was clear. The Harbinger's victory had changed everything, and there was no turning back. The future, for better or for worse, would be shaped by the choices they made and the battles they fought. A legacy that would echo through the ages and inspire generations to come. The strike team, led by Zarik and Korovash, moved silently through the dark corridors of the hidden Thurinian research facility. The air was thick with the stench of chemicals and the hum of machinery. Zarik's heart pounded in his chest as he scanned the area for any signs of danger. Korvash, his face set in grim determination, hacked into the facility's security system, disabling alarms and cameras as they progressed. As they delved deeper into the facility, the team stumbled upon a horrifying sight. Rows of containment cells lined the walls, each housing a different species in various stages of experimentation. Some were barely recognizable, their bodies twisted and deformed by the Thurinians' cruel manipulations. Others lay motionless, their minds broken by the relentless torture they had endured. Zarek's stomach churned as he saw a human test subject, her once vibrant eyes now dull and lifeless. He clenched his fists, rage boiling within him at the sight of such inhumanity. Korvash placed a hand on his shoulder, his voice low and urgent. We need to keep moving. There's no telling how much time we have before they discover us. The team split up, each taking a different section of the facility. Zarek and Korvash headed towards the central research lab, where they believed the most critical information was stored. As they entered the lab, they were confronted by a group of Thurinian scientists, who immediately reached for their weapons. Zarek and Korvash sprang into action, their training and anger fueling their movements. They dodged energy blasts and returned fire, taking down the scientists with precise shots. As the last Thurinian fell, Zarek rushed to the main computer console, his fingers flying over the keys as he searched for evidence of the atrocities committed within the facility. What he found made his blood run cold. Detailed records of genetic experiments, mind control techniques and the development of new biological weapons filled the screens. The Thurinians had been systematically testing these horrors on their captives, perfecting their methods of domination and control. As Zarek downloaded the files, a wounded Thurinian scientist caught Korvash's attention. The scientist, his breathing labored and his eyes filled with a mixture of fear and resignation, beckoned them closer. You think this is the extent of our work, he rasped, a bitter laugh escaping his lips. This is just the tip of the iceberg. The Thurinians have been manipulating the galaxy for centuries, orchestrating conflicts and suppressing knowledge to maintain our power. You've barely scratched the surface of what we've done. Zarik and Korvash exchanged a look of horror and determination. They knew that this information had to be shared with the galaxy, no matter the cost. They quickly finished gathering the evidence and rejoined the rest of the team, who had successfully freed the surviving test subjects. As they made their escape, Zarik activated the facility's self-destruct sequence, ensuring that the Thurinians could never use it again. The team watched from a safe distance as the facility exploded, a symbol of the Resistance's growing strength and the Thurinians' weakening grip on power. Back on the Harbinger, Zarek and Korvash presented the evidence to Captain Voss and the Resistance leaders. The room fell silent as they processed the magnitude of the Thurinians' crimes. Captain Voss, her face hardened with resolve, turned to her communications officer. Broadcast this information to every corner of the galaxy. Let every species see the true face of the Thurinians and the depths of their depravity. As the evidence spread like wildfire across the galaxy, more and more species turned against the Thurinians, their outrage and disgust fueling the fires of rebellion. The resistance had struck a powerful blow against their enemy, but they knew that the fight was far from over. With renewed determination they prepared for the battles to come, knowing that the fate of the galaxy hung in the balance. The Harbinger's Bridge was a flurry of activity, as Captain Voss and her crew prepared for the final confrontation with the Thurinian forces. The Allied fleet, 
a testament to the power of unity and shared purpose, stood ready to engage the enemy near their homeworld. Ships of all sizes and designs, representing the diverse species that had joined the resistance, formed a formidable armada against the once dominant Thurinians. Zarik and Korvash, now seasoned warriors and respected leaders within the resistance, gathered their team of elite fighters for a crucial mission. They knew that the outcome of this battle would determine the fate of the galaxy, and they were prepared to make the ultimate sacrifice if necessary. As the two fleets converged, the void of space erupted in a cacophony of weapons fire and explosions. The Harbinger, with its advanced shields and powerful armaments, led the charge, carving a path through the Thurinian defences. The resistance fighters, emboldened by the strength of their cause and the support of their allies, fought with unmatched determination and skill. Amidst the chaos of the battle, Zarek and Korovash saw an opening to board the Thurinian flagship. With a daring maneuver, they piloted their small craft through the enemy's defenses, dodging incoming fire and debris. As they breached the flagship's hull and disembarked, they were met with fierce resistance from the Thurinian guards. The elite team fought their way through the corridors of the massive ship, their weapons blazing and their resolve unwavering. They pushed forward, driven by the knowledge that every second counted in their mission to confront the Emperor and end the Thurinian threat once and for all. As they burst into the Emperor's throne room, Zarek and Korvash found themselves face to face with the being who had orchestrated the suppression of humanity and the manipulation of the galactic community for centuries. The Emperor, a towering figure draped in ornate robes, regarded them with a mixture of contempt and fear. You think you have won, the Emperor sneered, his voice dripping with malice. But you do not understand the forces you are dealing with. We Thurinians have known of your kind's threat for generations, foretold in the prophecies of our ancestors. Zarek stepped forward, his weapon trained on the Emperor. Your prophecies mean nothing. Your lies and deception end here, and the galaxy will be free from your tyranny. The Emperor laughed, a chilling sound that echoed through the chamber. You may destroy us, but you will never be free. The prophecy speaks of your kind's ultimate destruction, and I will ensure that it comes to pass. With a sudden movement, the Emperor activated a hidden control panel, and an alarm began to blare throughout the ship. I have initiated the self-destruct sequence. In a matter of moments this vessel will be consumed, and you will all perish with it. Korovash, his eyes widening with realization, turned to Zarek. We have to disable the self-destruct, or the entire resistance fleet will be caught in the blast. Zarek nodded grimly, his mind racing as he assessed their options. He turned to his team, his voice steady and commanding. Get back to the shuttle and evacuate immediately. Korvash and I will stay behind to disable the self-destruct. The team members hesitated, their loyalty and concern for their leaders evident in their eyes. But Zarik and Korvash were resolute, knowing that the fate of the galaxy rested on their shoulders. Go! Korvash shouted, his voice filled with urgency. We'll be right behind you. As the team reluctantly retreated, Zarik and Korvash shared a moment of silent understanding, a bond forged through countless battles and shared hardships. They knew that the odds of their survival were slim, but they were ready to make the ultimate sacrifice for the cause they believed in. With grim determination, they raced to the ship's engineering section, fighting their way through the remaining Thurinian guards. The countdown to destruction echoed in their ears, a relentless reminder of the precious seconds slipping away. As they reached the self-destruct mechanism, Zarek and Korvash worked frantically to disable the system, their hands flying over the unfamiliar controls. The Emperor's laughter, now tinged with madness, taunted them from the ship's intercom. You cannot stop the inevitable, he cackled. The prophecy will be fulfilled, and your species will be erased from existence. But Zarek and Korovash refused to be swayed by the Emperor's words. They poured all their skill and determination into their task, knowing that the lives of their comrades and the future of the galaxy depended on their success. With mere seconds remaining, they finally managed to override the self-destruct sequence. The ship shuddered as the countdown halted 
and the emperor's laughter turned to a howl of rage and disbelief. Zarik and Korvash, exhausted but triumphant, turned to make their escape. But as they raced towards the hangar bay, they realized that the damage to the ship was too severe. The flagship was already beginning to break apart, consumed by secondary explosions and structural failures. In a heart-wrenching moment, Zarek and Korvash accepted their fate. They had succeeded in their mission, but the price of victory would be their own lives. With a final, defiant roar, they charged towards the failing emperor, determined to ensure that he would not escape. The destruction he had wrought. As the flagship exploded in a blinding flash of light, the resistance fleet emerged victorious. The Thurinian Empire, once an unstoppable force of oppression and manipulation, crumbled in the face of the galaxy's united stand for freedom and justice. Though the loss of Zarik and Korvash weighed heavily on the hearts of their comrades, their sacrifice would be remembered as a turning point in the struggle for liberation. The galaxy, now free from the Thurinian threat, stood on the brink of a new era, one in which the diverse species of the cosmos could forge a future based on cooperation, equality, and the unwavering spirit of resistance that had brought them to this moment of triumph. The Thurinian flagship burst into a blinding flash of light, the force of the explosion slamming into the surrounding ships like a tidal wave. Debris scattered in all directions, peppering the hulls of the resistance fleet with twisted metal and shattered composites. On the bridge of the Harbinger, Captain Voss gripped the console, her knuckles white as she stared at the expanding fireball that had once been the enemy's stronghold. No, she whispered, her voice cracking with emotion. Zarek, Koravash! The bridge crew sat in stunned silence, the weight of their comrade's sacrifice hanging heavy in the air. They had known the risks, had understood the price that might be paid for their victory, but that didn't make the loss any easier to bear. Captain Voss closed her eyes, taking a moment to compose herself before turning to her crew. We will not let their deaths be in vain, she said, her voice steady and resolute. We will honor their memory by finishing what they started. Set a course for the Thurinian homeworld. It's time to end this once and for all. As the Harbinger and its allies descended upon the planet, they were met with a sight that few had expected. The streets were filled with Thurinians, their faces gaunt and their eyes hollow from years of oppression. They looked up at the ships, with a mixture of fear and hope, unsure of what this sudden turn of events would mean for their future. Captain Voss and her team landed in the capital city, where they were greeted by a group of Thurinian rebels who had been fighting against the regime from within. They shared stories of the atrocities committed by the Emperor and his followers, of the countless lives lost and the families torn apart. We have evidence, one of the rebels said, handing Captain Voss a data drive. Recordings, documents, everything you need to show the galaxy the true face of the Thurinian Empire. As the resistance forces spread out across the planet, they uncovered more and more evidence of the regime's crimes. Torture chambers, mass graves, experimental laboratories where prisoners had been subjected to unspeakable horrors. The scale of the atrocities was staggering, and it became clear that the Thurinians' rule had been built on a foundation of fear, manipulation, and genocide. In the weeks that followed, the galactic community came together to begin the long process of rebuilding. The Harbinger became a symbol of hope and unity, a reminder of the strength that could be found in diversity and cooperation. Species that had once been bitter enemies now worked side by side, sharing knowledge and resources in the spirit of a new era of peace. At the center of it all was Captain Voss, who had emerged as a respected leader and visionary. She worked tirelessly with representatives from across the galaxy to establish a new governing body, one that would ensure the mistakes of the past were never repeated. We must learn from our history, she said, addressing the newly formed council. We must embrace our differences, not fear them. Only then can we build a future that is truly just and equal for all. The council's first official act was to honor those who had given their lives in the fight against tyranny. Monuments were erected on a dozen worlds, each bearing the names of the fallen heroes. Zarik and Korvash were among them, 
their likenesses carved in stone and metal as a testament to their bravery and sacrifice. As Captain Voss stood before the monument on the Harbinger's homeworld, she couldn't help but reflect on the long and painful journey that had led them to this moment. So much had been lost, so many lives cut short in the pursuit of freedom, but as she looked out at the sea of faces before her, at the representatives of countless species united in their determination to build a better future, she knew that their sacrifices had not been in vain. The galaxy would heal as it always had, and though the scars of the past would never fully fade, they would serve as a reminder of the lengths to which some would go to protect the ideals of justice, equality, and unity. With a heavy heart and a sense of purpose, Captain Voss turned to face the gathering crowd, ready to lead them forward into a new dawn. The Harbinger's sensors pinged with an urgent alert, drawing the attention of Captain Voss and her crew. They crowded around the display, eyes widening as they processed the strange readings. A mysterious signal, unlike anything they had encountered before, emanated from an uncharted region of space. "'What do you make of it, Zora?' Captain Voss asked, turning to her chief science officer. Zora, a tall, slender Zintharian with piercing violet eyes, studied the data intently. It's a highly concentrated energy pulse, Captain. The frequency and amplitude are like nothing I've ever seen. It seems to be originating from a point just beyond the Velox Nebula. Captain Voss nodded, her brow furrowed in thought. Helm, set a course for the signal's origin. Engage the quantum drive. The Harbinger, flanked by a small fleet of allied ships, leaped into action, their engines flaring as they tore through the fabric of space. The stars streaked past the viewports, blurring into long lines of light as the ships hurtled towards their destination. As they dropped out of superluminal velocity at the edge of the Velox Nebula, the crew of the Harbinger gasped in awe at the sight before them. Floating in the void, surrounded by a shimmering haze of cosmic dust and gas, was a colossal structure unlike anything they had ever encountered. It was a gateway, a massive arch of gleaming metal and pulsing energy, its surface etched with intricate patterns and glyphs that seemed to dance and shift before their eyes. The structure dwarfed the Harbinger and its accompanying fleet, making them appear as mere specks against its immense backdrop. "'By the stars,' whispered Zora, her voice trembling with a mixture of fear and wonder. "'What is this thing?' Captain Voss leaned forward her eyes narrowing as she studied the gateway. I don't know, but we're going to find out. Assemble a team, Zora. We need to get a closer look. Within moments, a small group of scientists, engineers, and security personnel had gathered in the Harbinger's hangar bay. They boarded a sleek, compact shuttle, its hull reinforced to withstand the strange energies emanating from the gateway. As the shuttle approached the structure, the team could feel the hairs on the backs of their necks standing on end. The air crackled with an eerie, palpable energy, and the fabric of space itself seemed to warp and twist around them. They landed on a small platform at the base of the gateway, the shuttle's engines whining as they powered down. The team disembarked, their boots clanging against the alien metal as they made their way towards the structure's entrance. Inside, the gateway was a labyrinth of twisting corridors and cavernous chambers, each one filled with strange machinery and pulsing conduits of energy. The team moved cautiously, their sensors scanning every inch of the structure for clues to its purpose and origin. As they delved deeper into the heart of the gateway, they began to uncover a series of cryptic messages and warnings, etched into the walls and embedded in the very fabric of the machinery. The messages spoke of a great cataclysm that had befallen the civilization that had built this place, a catastrophe that had threatened to wipe them from existence. They were desperate, Zora said, her voice hushed as she ran her fingers over the ancient glyphs. They built this gateway as a last resort, a way to escape the destruction that was coming for them. Captain Voss frowned, her mind racing as she tried to piece together the fragments of information they had uncovered. But escape to where? And what does this have to do with humanity's advanced technology? As if in response, the gateway suddenly thrummed to life, its energy pulses intensifying, and the air shimmering with a strange, otherworldly light. The team scrambled back, 
their hearts pounding as they watch the structure begin to shift and change before their eyes. A holographic image flickered into existence, hovering above the central platform. It was a map, a star chart of a region of space that none of them had ever seen before, and at its center, pulsing with an eerie hypnotic light, was a single, solitary world. That's it, Captain Voss breathed, her eyes widening with realization. That's where they went, and that's where we'll find the answers we seek. The team exchanged glances, a mixture of excitement and trepidation etched on their faces. They knew that they were on the cusp of a discovery that could change everything, a revelation that could unlock the secrets of humanity's past and shape the future of the entire galaxy. But they also knew that the path ahead would be fraught with danger and uncertainty, and that the answers they sought might come at a terrible price. As they made their way back to the Harbinger, their minds racing with the implications of what they had found, they could only wonder what lay ahead and what new challenges and mysteries the future would bring. Captain Voss and her team worked tirelessly to unravel the secrets of the ancient gateway. They pored over the cryptic messages etched into its surface, trying to decipher the language and symbols used by the long-lost civilization. As they dug deeper, they began to notice patterns and connections that suggested the gateway was not an isolated structure, but part of a vast network spanning the galaxy. Captain, look at this, Zora called out, her voice tinged with excitement and disbelief. These coordinates, they're not just random numbers. They correspond to specific locations in space, and if I'm reading this correctly, each one is linked to another gateway. Captain Voss leaned in her eyes widening as she processed the implications of Zora's discovery. Are you saying there are more of these things out there? Zora nodded, her fingers flying over the console as she brought up a holographic map of the galaxy. Dozens, maybe even hundreds, and from what I can tell, they're not just scattered randomly. There's a pattern to their placement, like a web connecting different points in space and time. The team gathered around the map, marvelling at the intricate network of gateways that stretched across the stars. The idea that one could step through a portal and emerge instantly at a distant location was both thrilling and terrifying. The technology behind such a feat was beyond anything they had encountered before, and the possibilities it presented were staggering. This could change everything, Captain Voss breathed, her mind racing with the potential applications. Instantaneous travel exploration, trade, it would revolutionize the galaxy. But as they delved deeper into the data, a disturbing realization began to dawn on them. The coordinates and timestamps associated with each gateway seemed to correspond with key events in humanity's history, including their exile and the collapse of their civilization. Captain, I don't like what I'm seeing here, Zora said, her voice grave. It's almost as if these gateways were used to manipulate events to shape the course of our history. Captain Voss felt a chill run down her spine as she considered the implications. Had someone or something been pulling the strings all along? Were the gateways a tool of salvation or a weapon of destruction? Before they could ponder these questions further, alarms began to blare throughout the ship. Captain, we've got incoming, the tactical officer shouted. Multiple Thurinian vessels closing fast. Captain Voss cursed under her breath. They had been so focused on the gateway that they had let their guard down. The surviving Thurinians, desperate to claim the technology for themselves, had seized the opportunity to strike. All hands to battle stations, Captain Voss ordered, her voice ringing out over the comm. Protect the gateway at all costs. The Harbinger and its allies moved to intercept the Thurinian ships, their weapons primed and ready. The enemy vessels, sleek and deadly, bore down on them with relentless determination. The space around the ancient structure erupted into a maelstrom of fire and debris as the two sides clashed. The Harbinger's shields flared under the onslaught, its hull groaning under the strain. The Allied ships fought bravely, their crews determined to stand their ground and defend the gateway. On the bridge, Captain Voss gripped the arms of her chair, her knuckles white with tension. She watched as her crew worked frantically to keep the ship together, their faces etched with grim determination. 
Reroute power to the forward shields, she barked. Concentrate fire on their lead ship. The Harbinger's weapons lanced out, cutting through the void and finding their mark. The Thurinian vessel shuddered under the impact, its hull rupturing and spilling debris into space. But the enemy kept coming, their numbers seemingly endless. For every ship they destroyed, two more took its place, pressing the attack with ruthless efficiency. As the battle raged on, Captain Voss knew that they were running out of time. The Gateway, their only hope of unlocking the secrets of humanity's past and securing their future, was vulnerable. If the Thuarinians managed to seize control of it, all their sacrifices would be for nothing. We need to find a way to end this now, she growled, her mind racing as she tried to formulate a plan. Zora, is there anything in the Gateway's data that we can use? A weakness? A vulnerability? Zora, her face illuminated by the glow of her console, scanned the information frantically. There's a sequence here, a pattern that seems to activate the Gateway's defenses. If we can input the right code, it might buy us some time. Do it, Captain Voss ordered, her voice filled with desperate urgency. Zora's fingers danced across the controls, inputting the ancient symbols and commands. For a moment nothing happened. Then, with a sudden pulse of energy, the gateway came to life. A shimmering field of energy erupted from the structure, engulfing the nearby ships in an eerie glow. The Thurinian vessels, caught in the field's grasp, began to shudder and twist, their hulls warping and buckling under the strain. It's working, Zora cried out, her voice filled with a mix of relief and awe. But the victory was short-lived. As quickly as it had appeared, the energy field flickered and died, the ancient mechanisms overloaded by the sudden surge of power. The Thuarinians, momentarily stunned by the attack, regrouped and pressed their advantage. They swarmed the gateway, their weapons pounding its ancient surface with relentless fury. Captain Voss watched in horror as the structure began to crumble under the onslaught, its secrets and potential slipping away with every passing second. She knew that they had to act fast, or all would be lost. Prepare for ramming speed, she commanded, her voice filled with grim determination. We are going to take out as many of them as we can. The crew, their faces set with resolve, carried out her orders without hesitation. They knew that this was their last chance, their final stand against the forces that threatened to destroy everything they had fought for. As the Harbinger surged forward, its engine straining under the immense power. Captain Voss closed her eyes and thought of all those who had sacrificed their lives to bring them to this moment. Zarik, Korvash, and countless others who had fought and died for the truth, for the future of the galaxy. She whispered a silent prayer, a plea to the universe itself as the Harbinger plunged into the heart of the enemy fleet, its hull blazing with the fire of a thousand suns. The impact was cataclysmic, the shockwaves rippling out through space like a cosmic tsunami. In that moment, as the ancient gateway crumbled and the ships around her burned, Captain Voss knew that their fight was far from over. The secrets of humanity's past, the key to their future, lay scattered across the stars, waiting to be discovered. And she would not rest until she had uncovered the truth no matter the cost. As the battle raged on, the ancient gateway suddenly came to life. A blinding light erupted from the structure, engulfing the surrounding area in a dazzling display of energy. The Harbinger and the Thurinian ships were caught in the midst of the phenomenon, their crews shielding their eyes from the intense brightness. Captain Voss, momentarily disoriented, blinked away the spots dancing in her vision. As the light began to fade, she realized that she and her team were no longer aboard the Harbinger. Instead, they found themselves standing in an unfamiliar, cavernous space, the walls adorned with intricate patterns and glowing glyphs. Where are we? Zora asked, her voice echoing in the vast chamber. I don't know, Captain Voss replied, her hand instinctively reaching for her sidearm. But stay alert, we don't know what brought us here. As the team cautiously explored their surroundings, a ghostly figure materialized before them. It was a human, 
or at least the spectral image of one, clad in robes that seemed to shimmer and shift with an otherworldly energy. Welcome, Captain Voss and crew of the Harbinger, the figure spoke, its voice resonating with an ancient authority. I am Eldrin, a member of the civilization that created the gateways. Captain Voss stepped forward, her eyes narrowed. How do you know who we are? Eldrin smiled enigmatically. The gateways have been watching, waiting for the right moment to bring you here. We have much to discuss. The ancient human proceeded to reveal the true purpose of the gateways. He spoke of a cataclysmic event that had threatened to wipe out their civilization, forcing them to take desperate measures to ensure their survival. We constructed the gateways as a means of escape and preservation, Eldrin explained, his ghostly form flickering as he spoke. They were designed to scatter our people across the galaxy, seeding them on different worlds and in different times. Captain Voss listened intently, her mind racing with the implications of Eldrin's words, so the advanced technology we discovered on the Harbinger was left behind by our people, Eldrin confirmed, a breadcrumb trail, if you will, to guide future generations towards the truth and help reunite the scattered remnants of our civilization. The team exchanged glances, the weight of this revelation settling upon them. They had always known that humanity's past held secrets, but they had never imagined the scope of what had been hidden from them. But the gateways are not without their dangers, Eldrin warned, his expression growing somber. In the wrong hands, they could be used to manipulate time and reality itself. The power they hold is immense and potentially destructive. Captain Voss felt a chill run down her spine. The thought of such power falling into the hands of the Thurinians or any other malevolent force was terrifying. What do you want from us, she asked, her voice steady despite the gravity of the situation. Eldrin regarded the team thoughtfully. You have a choice to make, Captain. You can use the gateways to reunite the lost branches of humanity, to bring our people together once more. Or you can choose to seal the gateways away forever, to prevent their power from being misused. The weight of the decision hung heavy in the air. Captain Voss looked to her team, seeing the conflicting emotions playing across their faces. They had fought so hard to uncover the truth, to bring humanity back from the brink of extinction, but the risks were undeniable. We need time to consider this, Captain Voss said, her brow furrowed in thought. The consequences of either choice are too great to decide hastily. Eldrin nodded, his form beginning to fade. I understand, but do not tarry too long, Captain. The fate of humanity, and perhaps the galaxy itself, rests upon your shoulders. With those final words, the ancient human vanished leaving Captain Voss and her team alone in the cavernous chamber. They looked to one another, the gravity of their situation settling upon them like a physical weight. We have to get back to the Harbinger, Captain Voss said, her voice filled with urgency. We need to regroup to discuss this with the others. The team nodded in agreement, their faces set with determination. They knew that the path ahead would be fraught with challenges and difficult decisions, but they also knew that they could not shy away from the responsibility that had been placed upon them. As they began to search for a way back to their ship, Captain Voss couldn't shake the feeling that this was only the beginning of a much larger journey. The fate of humanity and the secrets of their past were now intertwined with the mysterious gateways, and she knew that the choices they made in the coming days would shape the future of the galaxy itself. Captain Voss paced the bridge of the Harbinger, her mind reeling from the ancient human's revelations. The weight of the decision before her was immense, and she could feel the eyes of her crew upon her, waiting for guidance. She opened her mouth to speak, but before she could utter a word, the ship's alarms blared to life. Captain, we've detected a massive energy surge from a distant gateway, the navigator shouted, his fingers flying across the console. It's the Thurinians. They've activated another portal. Captain Voss rushed to the navigator's side, her eyes widening as she saw the readings on the screen. The energy levels were off the charts, and the ripples it was sending through space-time were already beginning to distort reality around them. Those fools, she muttered under her breath. They have no idea what they're meddling with. 
she turned to face her crew, her expression hardened with resolve. The Thurinians are attempting to rewrite history, to ensure their own dominance over the galaxy. We cannot let that happen. The crew exchanged nervous glances, the gravity of the situation sinking in. They had faced many challenges before, but nothing quite like this. We have to stop them, Captain Voss continued, her voice growing stronger. And the only way to do that is to use the gateways ourselves. She began to pace the bridge once more, her mind racing with possibilities. We'll need a team our best and brightest. We'll have to navigate the gateways, track down the Thurinians, and undo whatever damage they've done to the timeline. The crew nodded in agreement, their determination growing with each passing moment. They knew the risks, but they also knew that the fate of the galaxy hung in the balance. Navigator, plot a course to the nearest gateway, Captain Voss ordered. Tactical, prepare the ship for potential hostile encounters. We don't know what we'll be facing on the other side. As the crew set to work, Captain Voss retreated to her quarters to assemble her team. She pored over personnel files, selecting those with the skills and experience necessary for such a critical mission. There was Lieutenant Zara Zen, the ship's chief engineer, whose technical expertise would be invaluable in navigating the complex gateway network, Sergeant Rick Thorne, the head of security, whose combat prowess and quick thinking had saved the crew countless times before, and Dr. Lena Solis, the brilliant scientist whose understanding of theoretical physics would be essential in unraveling the mysteries of time travel. As the team gathered in the briefing room, Captain Voss laid out the plan. We'll be traveling through the gateways across time and space to track down the Thurinians and stop them from altering history. It won't be easy, and we don't know what we'll encounter along the way. She paused, her gaze sweeping over the room. But I have faith in each and every one of you. We've faced impossible odds before, and we've always come out on top. This time we'll be no different. The team nodded, their expressions a mix of determination and apprehension. They knew the stakes, and they were ready to face whatever challenges lay ahead. As the Harbinger approached the gateway, Captain Voss took a deep breath, steeling herself for the journey to come. She knew that they were about to embark on a mission unlike any other, a desperate race through time to save the galaxy from the Thurinians' machinations. The gateway loomed before them, a swirling vortex of energy and light. Captain Voss gave the order, and the ship plunged into the portal, disappearing in a blinding flash. On the other side, they found themselves in a different time, a different place. The stars were unfamiliar, and the readings on their instruments were unlike anything they had seen before. Where are we? Dr. Solis asked, her voice filled with wonder and trepidation. More importantly, when are we? Lieutenant Zen added, her fingers dancing across the console as she tried to make sense of the data. Captain Voss shook her head, a sense of unease growing in the pit of her stomach. I don't know, but we have to keep moving. The Thurinians are out there somewhere, and we have to find them before they cause any more damage to the timeline. As they navigated the unfamiliar space, they encountered the first signs of the Thurinians' interference. Planets that should have been thriving were barren and lifeless, their civilizations erased from existence. Stars that should have burned bright were cold and dead, their light extinguished by the Thurinians' meddling. This is worse than we thought, Sergeant Thorne growled, his hand resting on the hilt of his weapon. We have to put a stop to this now. Captain Voss nodded, her resolve hardening with each passing moment. We will, Sergeant. We'll find the Thurinians, and we'll make them pay for what they've done. As they pressed on, they encountered other ships, other beings caught in the same desperate struggle. Some were allies, others were enemies but all were caught in the same web of time and space, fighting to preserve the fabric of reality. They battled the Thurinians across the eons, clashing in the skies above ancient civilizations and in the depths of uncharted nebulas. They witnessed pivotal moments in galactic history, saw the rise and fall of empires, and confronted the consequences of their own actions. Through it all, Captain Voss and her team remained steadfast in their mission, driven by the knowledge that the fate of the galaxy rested on their shoulders. 
they faced impossible odds, made difficult choices, and sacrificed more than they ever thought possible. But even as they fought to restore the timeline, they couldn't help but confront the ethical implications of their actions. Were they doing the right thing, meddling with the fabric of time itself? What gave them the right to decide the fate of countless civilizations, to alter the course of history to suit their own ends? These questions weighed heavily on Captain Voss as she led her team deeper into the labyrinth of time, battling the Thurinians at every turn. She knew that the decisions they made, the actions they took, would have consequences that would ripple across the galaxy for generations to come. And yet she also knew that they had no choice. The Thurinians had to be stopped, no matter the cost. The galaxy deserved to be free, to chart its own course, without the interference of those who would seek to control it. As they raced through the gateways across the vast expanse of space and time, Captain Voss and her team held fast to that belief. They would fight, they would sacrifice, they would do whatever it took to save the galaxy from the Thurinians' machinations. For in the end, that was all that mattered. The fate of the galaxy, the fate of all those who called it home, and Captain Voss would be damned if she let the Thurinians take that away. Zoxin slammed his fists into the mat, his chest heaving with exertion and frustration. The obstacle course loomed ahead, a daunting gauntlet of physical challenges that seemed insurmountable. He had tried and failed, time and time again, to conquer the course, but his small stature and lack of raw strength worked against him at every turn. As he pushed himself to his feet, ready to make another futile attempt, a hand clasped his shoulder. Zoxin turned to see Captain Marcus, his human instructor, looking down at him with a mix of concern and understanding. Walk with me, Zoxin, Captain Marcus said, his tone gentle but firm. I think it's time we had a talk. Zoxin followed, his head hung low, expecting another lecture on his shortcomings, but as they stepped away from the training grounds, Captain Marcus surprised him. I've been watching you, Zoxin. I see how hard you've been pushing yourself, and I know how frustrating it can be to feel like you're not making progress. Zoxin looked up, meeting his instructor's eyes. I just can't seem to get it right. I'm not strong enough, fast enough. I'm starting to think I don't belong here. Captain Marcus shook his head. I felt the same way when I first joined the Academy. I was smaller than everyone else, and I struggled with the physical challenges, just like you. Zaxin's eyes widened. You? But you're one of the best instructors here. Captain Marcus chuckled. I wasn't always. I had to work twice as hard as everyone else just to keep up. But you know what I learned? It's not about raw strength or speed. It's about using what you have, your own unique abilities, to your advantage. He placed a hand on Zoxin's shoulder, his gaze intense. You're smart, Zoxin. You're creative and adaptable. Those are strengths that can't be measured by how fast you can run or how much you can lift. Zoxin considered his words, a glimmer of hope sparking in his chest. But how do I use those strengths to get through the obstacle course? That's where your creativity comes in, Captain Marcus said. Instead of trying to power through the obstacles like everyone else, look for unconventional solutions. Analyze each challenge, find the weak points, and use your intelligence to find a way through. He smiled, his eyes crinkling at the corners. And don't worry, I'll be here to help you. We can work on some additional training, focus on developing your strengths. I have faith in you, Zoxin. You have what it takes to succeed. Zoxin felt a surge of determination, his doubts beginning to fade. Thank you, Captain, I won't let you down. As they returned to the training grounds, Zoxin looked at the obstacle course with new eyes. He began to break down each challenge, his mind racing with possibilities. Where before he had seen only insurmountable barriers, he now saw opportunities to outthink and outmaneuver. In the days that followed, Zoxin threw himself into his training with renewed vigor. Under Captain Marcus's guidance, he honed his problem-solving skills and developed new techniques to compensate for his physical limitations. And slowly but surely, he began to make progress. The obstacles that had once seemed impossible began to fall, one by one. 
His classmates watched in amazement as Zoxin navigated the course with a combination of agility, precision, and clever improvisation. As he crossed the finish line, panting and sweat-drenched but victorious, Zoxin caught Captain Marcus's eye. The instructor gave him a nod of approval, a smile of pride tugging at his lips. Zoxin grinned back, feeling a sense of accomplishment that went beyond just completing the course. He had proven to himself that he belonged, that his unique strengths had value, and with Captain Marcus's support and his own determination, he knew that he could face any challenge that lay ahead. As Zoxin's performance in the obstacle course and training simulations continued to improve, whispers of his unorthodox methods and quick thinking began to circulate through the academy. It wasn't long before these rumours reached the ears of Admiral Zara, the commandant of the academy, and a seasoned veteran who had seen more than her fair share of battles. Intrigued by the reports of Zoxin's unique approach to problem-solving, Admiral Zara decided to see for herself what the fuss was about. She watched from the observation deck as Zoxin navigated a particularly challenging simulation, his small frame darting through the obstacles with a speed and agility that belied his size. But it was Zoxin's tactical decisions that truly caught the Admiral's attention. Where other cadets relied on brute force and standard maneuvers, Zoxin employed unconventional strategies that caught his simulated enemies off guard. He used his environment to his advantage, luring his opponents into traps and using their own strengths against them. Admiral Zara leaned forward, her eyes narrowing as she studied Zoxin's every move. There was a spark of something special in this cadet, a glimmer of potential that she had rarely seen in all her years of training. As the simulation ended and Zoxin emerged victorious, Admiral Zara made her way down to the training floor. Zoxin snapped to attention as she approached, his chest heaving from the exertion of the simulation. Cadet Zoxin, Admiral Zara said, her voice crisp and commanding. Walk with me. Zoxin fell into step beside the Admiral, his heart pounding with a mixture of excitement and nervousness. They walked in silence for a moment, the Admiral's gaze fixed straight ahead. I've been watching you, Cadet she said at last. Your performance in these simulations has been impressive. Zoxin felt a swell of pride at the Admiral's words, but he kept his expression carefully neutral. Thank you, Admiral, he said. I've been working hard. Admiral Zara nodded. I can see that, but it's not just your effort that sets you apart, it's your approach. You think differently than the others. She stopped walking and turned to face Zoxin directly. I want to see what you can really do, cadet. I'm inviting you to participate in a series of advanced simulations designed to test your tactical and strategic thinking in a variety of scenarios. Are you up for the challenge? Zoxin's eyes widened. Advanced simulations were typically reserved for the most promising cadets, those who had already proven themselves in the standard training. To be invited as a first-year cadet was virtually unheard of. Yes, Admiral, Zoxin said, his voice filled with determination. I'm ready. Over the next few weeks, Zoxin found himself pushed to his limits in the advanced simulations. He faced deep space battles against overwhelming odds, planetary invasions with limited resources, and complex diplomatic negotiations that required quick thinking and adaptability. In each scenario, Zoxin's unconventional tactics and ability to think outside the box set him apart. He used his small size to his advantage, slipping through enemy defences undetected and striking at critical moments. He formed alliances with unlikely allies, leveraging their unique abilities to turn the tide of battle. Word of Zoxin's performance spread quickly through the academy, and he soon found himself the subject of both admiration and envy from his peers. Some cadets whispered that he was too reckless, that his unorthodox methods would get him and his team killed in a real battle. Others saw him as a visionary, a brilliant strategist who could outwit even the most experienced military minds. Through it all, Admiral Zara watched Zoxin's progress with a keen eye. She saw in him a raw potential that, if properly honed, could make him one of the greatest military leaders the galaxy had ever seen. She began to take a more active role in his training inviting him to private sessions where she shared her own experiences and insights on the art of war. 
she taught him the importance of adaptability, of being able to think on his feet and adjust his strategies in the heat of battle. Under Admiral Zara's guidance, Zoxin's skills continued to grow. He learned to combine his own natural abilities with the unique strengths of other species, creating a fighting style that was both effective and unpredictable. As he progressed through the simulations, Zoxin began to see the true potential of this approach. By working together, by leveraging the diversity of the galaxy's many species, they could achieve things that no single race could accomplish alone. It was a revelation that would shape Zoxin's path as a military leader, and one that would have profound implications for the future of the galaxy itself. Alarms blared through the halls of the Academy as news of the Vorath attack spread like wildfire. Zoxin rushed to the command center, his heart pounding with a mix of fear and determination. The room buzzed with activity, officers shouting orders and analysts frantically poring over data streams. Admiral Zara stood at the center of the chaos, her face grim as she studied the holographic displays. Zoxin, over here, she called out, beckoning him to join her. I need your mind on this. Zoxin hurried to her side, his eyes widening as he took in the scope of the destruction. Human and allied colonies across the sector were under siege, their defenses crumbling under the onslaught of the Vorath's advanced weaponry. They came out of nowhere, Admiral Zara said, her voice tight with frustration. Their technology, their tactics, it's like nothing we've ever seen before. Our forces are struggling to even respond. Zoxin leaned in closer, studying the data with a critical eye. There was something strange about the way the Vorath moved, the precision of their strikes. It almost seemed as if they were acting as one mind, anticipating and countering every move the human forces made. I need fresh ideas, Zoxin, Admiral Zara said, turning to face him fully. I'm putting together a task force to analyze these attacks, and find a way to stop them. I want you on it. Zoxin nodded, his mind already racing with possibilities. I'll do whatever it takes, Admiral. The task force assembled quickly, a diverse group of human and alien specialists from across the academy. Zoxin found himself working alongside experts in xenotechnology, quantum mechanics, and military strategy. They pored over every scrap of data they could find, searching for patterns and weaknesses in the Vorath's attacks. It was Zoxin who made the breakthrough. As he studied the sensor readings from a particularly devastating strike, he noticed an odd fluctuation in the quantum field around the Vorath ships. Look at this, he said, pointing to the data. It's almost as if their ships are communicating with each other on a quantum level. That's how they're coordinating their attacks so precisely. The others crowded around, their eyes widening as they saw the truth in Zoxin's words. Dr. Lerner, a Zintharian quantum physicist, let out a low whistle. Quantum entanglement, she said, shaking her head in amazement. They've found a way to use it for instantaneous communication and coordination. No wonder our forces can't keep up. Zoxin felt a surge of excitement as an idea began to form in his mind. What if we could disrupt their entanglement, break the connection between their ships? The team looked at him, skepticism and hope warring in their expressions. It's a long shot, Dr. Lerner said, but it might be our only chance. They set to work, Zoxin taking the lead as they designed a device that could generate a focused burst of quantum interference. It was a delicate balance, trying to find a frequency that would disrupt the Vorath's communication without affecting their own technology. Finally, after days of tireless effort, they had a prototype. Admiral Zara gave the order to test it in the field, and the task force held its breath as they watched the battle unfold. The device worked better than they could have hoped. As the quantum interference washed over the Vorath fleet, their coordination faltered, Ships veered off course, firing wildly as their connection to each other was severed. The human forces, seizing the opportunity, pressed their advantage and drove the Vorath back. It was a small victory, but a significant one. Zoxin felt a rush of pride as he watched the Vorath retreat, knowing that his idea had made a difference. Admiral Zara clapped him on the shoulder, a rare smile on her face. Well done, Zoxin, she said. 
you may have just given us a fighting chance. But even as they celebrated, Zoxin knew that this was only the beginning. The Vorath would adapt, find new ways to attack, and he would be ready to meet them, his mind already racing with new ideas and strategies. The battle was far from over, but with Zoxin and his team on the front lines, humanity had a chance to stand tall against the darkness. The skies above the human colony turned an ominous shade of crimson as the Vorath's warships descended like a swarm of angry hornets. Their sleek, black hulls glinted in the dying light, a stark contrast to the vibrant green of the colony's lush forests. Zoxin stood atop the colony's central command tower, his eyes narrowed as he surveyed the approaching enemy. The weight of command settled heavily on his shoulders, but he stood tall, his resolve unwavering. They're coming, he said, his voice steady over the calm link. All units prepare for battle. Around him the colony buzzed with activity as human and alien defenders scrambled to their positions. Zoxin had spent the past few hours poring over maps and data, analyzing the colony's defenses and searching for any advantage they could use against the Vorath. He had a plan, but it would require every ounce of courage and ingenuity they could muster. As the first wave of Vorath fighters screamed towards the colony, Zoxin gave the order. Activate the ion cannons. Hidden among the colony's towering trees, a series of modified ion cannons hummed to life. They had been retrofitted with Zoxin's quantum disruption technology, designed to interfere with the Vorath's coordination. The cannons fired, sending bolts of crackling energy into the sky. The Vorath fighters, caught off guard by the unexpected attack, scattered in confusion. "'That's working!' shouted a human officer, pumping his fist in the air. But Zoxin knew it was only the beginning. The Vorath would adapt quickly, and they still had ground forces to contend with. He turned to his second-in-command, a fierce Xintharian warrior named Lyra. Lyra, take your team and secure the perimeter. We can't let them breach the colony's walls. Lyra nodded, her eyes gleaming with determination. We'll hold the line, Zoxin. They won't get past us. As Lyra and her team raced to defend the perimeter, Zoxin turned his attention to the colony's civilian population. They had already been evacuated to underground shelters, but he knew they would be vulnerable if the Vorath breached the defenses. He opened a comm channel to the shelters. This is Commander Zoxin. I need every able-bodied civilian to assist with fortifying the shelters. Use whatever materials you can find, furniture, equipment, anything that can be used as a barricade. In the shelters, men, women and children sprang into action, working together to reinforce their safe havens. They hauled metal tables and chairs, stacking them against the doors and walls. Engineers rigged makeshift force fields from spare parts, while medics prepared to treat any wounded. Above ground the battle raged on. The Vorath had adapted to the ion cannons, and their fighters were once again swarming the colony. Zoxin's team fought back with everything they had, using the colony's terrain to their advantage. They lured the Vorath into narrow canyons, where they could be picked off by snipers. They set traps in the dense forests, using the trees as cover for ambushes. But the Vorath kept coming wave after relentless wave. Zoxin could see the fatigue setting in on his team's faces, the sweat and grime mixing with the determination in their eyes. They were holding on, but barely. Just when all seemed lost, a shout went up from the command tower. Reinforcements! The reinforcements have arrived! Zoxin felt a surge of relief as he saw the friendly ships descending from the sky. They tore into the Vorath's ranks, catching them in a devastating crossfire. On the ground, fresh troops poured into the colony, their weapons blazing as they joined the fray. The tide had turned. With renewed vigor, Zoxin and his team pushed forward, driving the Vorath back. They fought side by side with their reinforcements, human and alien united in common cause. The Vorath, faced with an enemy that refused to yield, began to falter. In a final, desperate push, Zoxin led a charge against the Vorath's command ship. They boarded the vessel, fighting their way through the corridors in a deadly game of cat and mouse. In the end, it was Zoxin who confronted the Vorath commander, a towering figure clad in black armor. Surrender, Zoxin said, 
his weapon trained on the commander. Your forces are defeated, it's over. The commander laughed, a harsh grating sound. You think this is over, human, this is only the beginning. The Vorath will never stop until we have purged the galaxy of your kind. Zoxin's finger tightened on the trigger. Then we'll be ready for you, every time, every battle. We'll fight you with everything we have, and we will win. With those words, he fired and the commander fell. The Vorath's command ship, its leader gone, fell into disarray. The remaining Vorath forces, seeing their defeat, fled the colony, their ships retreating into the depths of space. On the ground, the defenders of the colony cheered, their voices raised in triumph. They had done the impossible. They had held the line against the Vorath, and they had won. Zoxin, exhausted but proud, stood among them, his armor battered and his face streaked with sweat and blood. You did it, Zoxin, said Admiral Zara, who had arrived with the reinforcements. You held them off. You gave us the time we needed. Zoxin shook his head. We did it, Admiral. All of us, human and alien, fighting together. That's how we'll win this war. That's how we'll defeat the Vorath. As the cheers of victory echoed across the colony, Zoxin knew that this was only the first step. The war was far from over, and the Vorath would be back. But for now, they had hope. They had proof that the Vorath could be beaten, that unity and ingenuity could triumph over brute force and aggression. And, and with that knowledge they would fight on until the galaxy was safe and free once more. The Galactic Council Chamber erupted into cheers as the news of Zoxin's victory spread. Admiral Zara took the podium, her face beaming with pride. Today we honor the bravery and ingenuity of one of our own. Zoxin, step forward. Zoxin, still dressed in his battle-worn armor, made his way to the front of the chamber. He stood tall, his eyes scanning the faces of the assembled dignitaries and military leaders. Admiral Zara placed a medal around his neck. For your exceptional service, your unwavering dedication and your innovative strategies that turned the tide of this war, I hereby promote you to the rank of commander. You will lead our forces as we push back against the Vorath and secure a future for all species in the galaxy. Zoxin nodded, his voice steady as he spoke. I am honored, Admiral, but this victory belongs to all of us, to every human and alien who fought side by side, who trusted in each other's strengths and covered each other's weaknesses. Together, we have shown that diversity is our greatest asset. As the war raged on, Zoxin's team became the tip of the spear in the fight against the Vorath. They worked tirelessly, analyzing the enemy's tactics and developing countermeasures. Zoxin pored over the data, his mind racing with possibilities. Look at this, he said, pointing to a holographic display. The Vorath's quantum entanglement network has a weakness. If we can disrupt the synchronization at these key nodes, we can throw their entire command structure into chaos. His team set to work, designing specialized weapons and infiltration protocols. They tested their theories in simulations, refining their approach until they had a viable plan of attack. Zoxin led the charge, piloting a stealth ship deep into Vorath territory. They struck at the heart of the enemy's infrastructure, planting disruption devices at the critical nodes. The effect was immediate and devastating. The Vorath's coordination faltered, their ships falling out of formation and their attacks becoming erratic. The human and allied forces pressed their advantage, pushing the Vorath back and liberating occupied worlds. Zoxin's strategies were studied and adapted by military leaders across the galaxy, his name becoming synonymous with innovation and success. In the final battle, Zoxin's team infiltrated the Vorath's command ship. They fought their way through the corridors, facing fierce resistance at every turn. Zoxin led from the front, his plasma rifle blazing as he cut a path towards the bridge. They burst onto the bridge, confronting the Vorath leader. The alien towered over Zoxin, its exoskeleton gleaming with advanced technology. It lunged forward, its energy blade slicing through the air. Zoxin ducked and rolled, coming up behind the leader. He fired his rifle, the plasma bolt searing through the alien's armor. The leader staggered, its blade falling from its grasp. 
Zoxin closed in, his own blade at the ready. They clashed in a furious melee, trading blows and counter moves. The Vorath leader was strong and fast, but Zoxin's training and agility gave him the edge. He feinted left, then struck right, his blade finding a gap in the leader's defenses. The leader fell, its lifeblood pooling on the deck. Zoxin stood over it, his chest heaving with exertion. Surrender, he demanded, his voice carrying across the bridge. The Vorath, seeing their leader fallen, laid down their arms. The war was over, the galaxy saved. As the celebrations erupted across the Allied worlds, Zoxin found a quiet moment to reflect. He thought back to his days at the Academy, to the challenges he had faced and the lessons he had learned. He remembered Captain Marcus, who had taught him to play to his strengths and to never give up. He thought of his classmates, human and alien alike, who had become his friends and his comrades in arms. He realized that the key to their victory had not been superior technology or brute strength, but the ability to work together, to combine their diverse skills and perspectives into something greater than the sum of its parts. Zoxin looked out at the stars, a smile on his face. There would be new challenges ahead, new threats to face. But he knew that as long as humans and aliens stood together, as long as they embraced their differences and fought for their common goals, there was nothing they couldn't achieve. If you finish this story, please subscribe and like the video. Then leave a comment that says, I like the story, and I will heart every single one of them. It really helps me. Thank you for your time.